Brian and I have been talking since probably about last February. We've been talking about the plan. The plan. Do you know what? If I have a plan, I got a goal. I got a purpose. If I don't have a plan, I don't have it down, I don't have it together, then I got issues. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my history, just a little bit, because I got to take you there before we get on with your plan. You say, What's that old woman know? She's a little loud. She's a little out there. Where's she been? Why does she know security? She doesn't know much. She just taught school. She just taught kids. Yeah, I taught kids. I love teaching kids. I taught kids for 21 years. Every level. You can say, well, she couldn't keep a job. I called it. They wanted me everywhere. <laughs> it's perception, people. Okay. <laughs> okay. I taught every level. I taught gifted and talented. I also taught remedial reading in the middle school, okay? That's how I learned to handle the media when they came, okay? I'll just tell you that. <gasps> Woo! They're monsters on parole. Ah. Oh. <laughs> if you've been there, you know. I had taught 21 years. I was in an elementary library that I had decided. One little five-year-old said to me, he said, Miss Christian! I said, yes. He said, I've been down, I went downtown to the big library. I said, you did? He said, yes. He said, they've got to be quiet there. I said, oh, you got to be quiet there. See, in my library, we just wanted to learn to read and go anywhere. I loved what I did, and they loved what I did, and we were happy, and I had kids in there all the time. And my goal in life was to be better than P.E. or music. Okay, if you're not on my chick, you probably don't know what I mean, but if they'd rather be in the library than P.E. or music, I was the winner. Okay, all right. Where do you want to go when you have free time? To the library. That doesn't even make sense, does it? Okay, okay. It made sense at my school. My daughter was going off to college. The Lord blessed me with one. Tried to have more, but didn't happen. Miscarried the other one. You know what I'm saying? So I just had one and raised a bunch. Raised a bunch, but just had one. Okay, my daughter who walked like me and talked like me and lived right across the hall from me was going to college. Okay. And some cousin decided to take her off to Nashville and show her for a week what Christian college was like. <laughs> she was in love with it. Do you know? She wanted to go off to school. She wanted to go two hours away from school, from me, from her mother, from her breath of life. And I wasn't sure that was a good thing. And my husband knew it wasn't when she had a full scholarship to go to Murray State, where it was about an hour from home. It was hard. It's tough. She went. I told my husband I would change jobs if that's what it took for us to be able to afford it because they give you something called half tuition scholarship, which is called bait to me. Okay, they just get you there. It costs you all kinds of extra money to get you there. <laughs> I called it bait. That's it. So I applied for another job. The other job was PR grant writer. Title one, Title four, Title two, Goals two thousand. There were so many hats for this job at the board office. You couldn't even change them quick enough. Hey, y'all know where I'm going with this, okay? Whatever somebody else isn't doing, that's probably what you're supposed to do today. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, uh -huh, okay, y'all get it. Y'all get it. Y'all get it. And what's at the bottom of your contract? And anything else the superintendent deems necessary. Do you love that one? That just means uh, you know whatever. Toilets need cleaning, baby. You can do it. You know. I was leaving the security and the love fest at an elementary school. If you haven't been in one, you don't know what I'm talking about. If you've been there, you do know what I'm talking about. There is a love fest. There is a family ness of an elementary school. You leave that to go to a business of education. Board office is the business of education. It's where's the money, who's in control of what. And that was not the type of person I was. I'm all about the love fest. I can walk with kids on my legs. You know what I'm saying? Wrapped around both spots. You know what I'm saying? I can do that. It's okay. I was not happy in my position. I thought, I've told my daughter all her life, you have to keep a job a year. You don't give it up. Then I'm going back. 
Then for three years, and if it takes me forever to pay for her education and she has to help me do that, we're just going to do it. I'm living this one year and then I'm going back and I'd go back to my elementary school just because I had to get there for some reason. They'd say, when are you coming off maternity leave? <laughs> that's all kids know when you're not there anymore. You're on maternity leave. No, that's not happening. Yeah, I always looked like I was on maternity leave. I just wasn't on maternity leave. Okay. Can I tell you where, where, where this is? Okay, this is a small, it's a larger county than some, but it's a small rural area in Kentucky. And if you know the shape of Kentucky, if you're a fourth grade teacher or above, you know the shape of Kentucky. You know, or you remember that. And it's kind of like a key. And we're down in the west, and we're in the south, and we're close to Tennessee, and we're close... We're two hours from Nashville, and then we're over here by Missouri and Illinois, you know, all that kind of area. Okay. We're kind of big city. Paducah was kind of big city for that area. Paducah. You know Paducah? Okay. Paddywhack. Okay. okay. Paducah. All right. We kind of big for that area because we have three high schools. We got three middle schools, and we got 12 elementaries. So you can't just have one high school and one, you know, you got... And our mentality at the time, God bless us, you buy a door at one high school, all oh, the other two get a door. Do, do the other two need a door? No, they might need a window, but we don't get window. We wait till we get, need window at one school, then everybody gets a window. <laughs> and I don't know why that happens, except, you know, we got to have equal representation. Lots of issues, lots of issues. I was living in uh, this new position, which... When I got it, I thought, I had the Title IV part, and I had the PR part, and I could PR anybody. I could make a child won the science fair. I could get them on the TV. I could get them in the TV. I could put them in the paper. I could say, this child is wonderful. I could say, this teacher's, what, look what this teacher's doing. The stock market with her kids. I could get them. I thought every teacher is a winner. Every, every child is a winner. That's not a problem for me. But I did worry about what if the drug dogs are come to school and some parent says, oh, I shouldn't have had uh, marijuana. You know, there's marijuana maybe in somebody's locker. And that parent calls me and says, you know me, that wasn't my son. There was a slip, you know, in that locker and somebody else stuck that in there because you know my child. That wouldn't happen. I thought, ew, I don't want to deal with that because I'm the positive woman. Do you? And then I thought, what about that non-custodial parent trying to get a child off of one of our playgrounds, which we don't have any of our playgrounds fenced? I thought, ooh, that's not a good idea. Maybe I don't need this job. But then I thought, oh, I got to have it because I got to have it. It wasn't more money per day. It was more days with the same amount of money. Are you with me? All right. All right. We've lived those jobs. I just want you to be with me. I want you to be with me in this small town, three high schools. The one high school I live two miles from, my husband is teaching agriculture. Lots of blue corduroy at my house. Anybody know what that means? I sleep here by the owl. Anybody know? Here by the owl. You know, all the FFA, I believe in American agriculture. Well, okay. That one just went flat. Okay. My husband was an ag teacher for 23 years at Heath High School. We were out in the little rural area. Our little road doesn't have any shoulder. Okay. If you meet the school bus, you pull into a driveway. Okay. You, you, got, you see the picture, can't you? Okay. We're backwoodsy. Okay. My daughter had just graduated from this high school, gone off to the big city of Nashville, and I said, you be careful. You be safe. Don't you get out at 2 o'clock in the morning and go to Kroger and get yourself some milk because you don't have any in the morning. You will get... Somebody will pick you up. You'll get in trouble. Because now, back home, we're always safe. But you're not always safe in Nashville. It's a big city. I was worried. Three months into a new job. Thanksgiving. Didn't want to go back. It's just like a kid at school. I don't want to go to school. Mama, I don't want to go to school. Mama, I don't want to go to school. Mama said, you got to go to school. Kid said, my husband, you got to go to school. You got to do this. My daughter had been home. I'd had a good time with her. She went back to school. She's happy as a lark. You know, all she called for is money. She's happy. <gasps> okay. I get to the office a little later than usual, which wasn't late. I was always there 30 minutes early. A little later than early. A little later than usual, a blonde-headed secretary came running out. 
She was one eighth mine. <laughs> one eighth. If those in the back didn't catch that. She came out also at that time, we're talking 97, 98 school year. There were some men that didn't know how to get their own email. So she said, you're kind of techie, so I'm not going to help you unless you need it. Thank you. Appreciate it. My little blonde, she's a precious woman. I still love her today. She came running out and she said she'd like to go home early, so she came in early. That was okay. She came running out and she said, something has happened at Heath High School. Well, now, something has happened at Heath High School could be anything. I mean, what does that mean? That doesn't mean anything. That just means something has happened. Of course, I also know I just left the Heath area. I also know that somebody is there that I love. And everybody at that school I love. Because that's my community. Okay? Then... She said, there's been a shooting. That was the next word. Okay, immediately, I can't even, I can tell you in words, but before the words come out, I thought, my husband, I'm sorry, that came to me first. That came before. My daughter is not there, came with my husband. She is in Nashville. She's safe in a big city. (laughs) My husband is at Heath. 97, some of you probably were in diapers, but in 97, (laughs) in 97, we didn't have rural children shooting rural children in their schools yet. That was a new phenomenon. We were number two in a spree of eight that year. If you remember Pearl, Mississippi, that happened right before us. And I didn't remember it until after ours happened. I just kind of, it was a blurb to me, okay? <sighs> she said, some, there's a shooting. There's been a shooting. There's been a gunfire. There's been something. Immediately, I'm thinking a parent that's on dope. I'm thinking some wild somebody whose kid didn't get enough time at basketball or football. I mean, some weird something that just doesn't even make sense to me. Somebody's grade wasn't good enough. Somebody didn't like the fact that they got a parking ticket because they didn't park where they were supposed to. Something stupid. No way would I have ever thought till I was on the way out there and I heard on the radio that it was a child hurting children. Then it was our child hurting children. Then it was two down. Now, I don't know to you what two down means, but two down to me, I kept thinking, I hope that means two on the way to the hospital, not two dead. I couldn't get there quick enough, but we had things we had to do at the central office before I could, they wouldn't let me go. I was squirming like a worm in hot ashes. I was now the PR lady. I was going to be doing the first press release. I was going to be leaving the information, the one voice, at the board office so that all our secretaries and my one-eighth secretary would not be sending the wrong information through the fax machine, through email to people. And we weren't all just guesstimating what was happening. We were also deciding what counselors we should send to the two hospitals because we were going to have kids going to hospitals that more than one. Because we had EMTs taking them. And we had EMTs that couldn't get in because we had... A TV news guy standing up there who had been a veteran of a TV news guy who said, you may want to go out to the school and pick up your children before they ever had the EMTs all there and clogging the roads before we could get those babies out of there. And I told you what kind of road we had. We had TV news there before I got there, but I got there as quickly as I could because I kept saying, can I go, can I go, can I go? I need to go, I need to go, I need to go. As soon as I did get there and I went the back way because I know the back way because I live there, I left my car not on the railroad track but close to the railroad track because I know how to get there by the railroad track. I ran as fast as I could run. 
And when I got there, there was some semblance of order. Not a whole lot, but some semblance of order. And what they had done is they had, which was a wonderful thing, they had people placed at the doors. With the list of the ones who had been hurt, we had three that passed away, not right immediately, but three that passed away. And you will find out that you do not tell that anybody dies until the coroner, not the hospital. When the hospital calls you and says somebody passes away, you, don't, you, do not, you do not put it in a press release, you do not put it anywhere. If the coroner doesn't tell you, they will fight over it and they will tell you that it's not legal till the coroner says it's legal. So that is something you need to know. Something I found out. Then there were others that were sent to the hospital that did not pass, but one of them still in a wheelchair, and she's just getting ready to have her second child. God bless her little heart. Just wrote a book called Forgive, well, about forgiveness. I don't know how she can do it, but we're moving on. Anyway, this young man had decided. He was one of ours. He was homegrown. He wasn't one that moved in. We weren't in a big city. His mama didn't work. His daddy did. Later on we find out that he's ill, mentally ill, but we didn't know that at the time. They didn't know that either. His backpack was full of stuff it shouldn't have had in it. We are the quilt capital of the world. He had quilts. There were things in his quilts. He's going to do a sign for English. He told his sister, who was the Val Victorian the year he was a freshman and this happened. She drove him to school. He came in the band room. He was not just disenfranchised because he was a band member. You know, everybody says, they're all disenfranchised. They don't bl- they're not part of anything. He's a band member. We had a prayer circle before school. You can't pray with children at school. Not if it's a public school, but you, can't, you don't keep them from it. If they want to have a little prayer circle before school, that's their business. They did it every day. They'd never done it every day for four years. They did it in the lobby before school. We have a big lobby with glass windows. That's what they did. Some of them would sit on the outside watching. Some of them were inside. It was open to anybody who wanted it. That's just part of what happened there. The ones on the outside that day, one of them decided to open fire. I'm here to tell you, it can happen anywhere. It can be small or large. Challenging a new job was not easy. It was the unthinkable. You may have to deal with the unthinkable. You don't want to be on the front of the New York Times the next day. The first day I cried, it was the Friday, it happened on Monday. first day I let myself cry, I let myself down because I really didn't sleep more than two hours because we had 150 media personalities. Do you know where you're going to put your media personalities? Do you know where you're going to put your media? Do you have a place for them yet? We're going to talk about that in a minute. Do you know where you're going to put your media when they come? They are going to camp out for four or five days. You're going to have to feed them something. You're going to have to have a designated area for them. You don't want your kids to be there. And there's going to be some of your kids, especially middle and high, that think that they're going to be the next American Idol if they get to be on TV. (coughs) Even if they're grieving, they're just kids. And they think if they get to talk to television news and if they see somebody like Don Vertangelo or they see somebody like Katie Kirk, they think, (gasps) they idealize these people. And they want to be up there. And they don't realize what they're going to say. Because a year and one day after our tragedy, 110 people were sued. They were placed in a lawsuit and 10 of them were children. 10 of them heard something bad, is going to, something big is going to happen. And they didn't know what big meant in 97. And since they didn't report something big is going to happen, they were sued. Now, had I let one of those ten be the spokesperson? Day before Columbine, I was in Colorado talking to school executives about safety. April 19th, 1999. April 20th, I was on the airplane coming home. I thought Kosovo was having another shooting when I got off the plane, and it was, it was 
was Columbine. And I just talked to them and I just said, and one of their safety men who was just as nice as he could be, he got up and he said, ma'am, he said, I appreciate what you're saying about not letting kids talk. I appreciate that. He was very kind. He said, but we always let a student talk because we want our people to realize we have articulate students at our school and this is an opportunity for our school to show that we have articulate students and we get a student council president or something to stand up and say whatever it is we need for them to say so that it, we show that our school is in charge and our students are articulate instead of somebody they might get at the mall. And I said, you know, I understand that. But I said, had I done that, I said two of the ones that were sued are ones I might have picked because they were on the student council and they were our best speakers. And what if they'd have said something and I'd have been the one that gave them to the press? I could not live with that. I wouldn't give teachers to the press. Not one teacher was given to the press. Principals had to be, we talked about it, we had press releases. And then, after that, we asked the counselor if they wanted to because all we want, our message was, our kids are grieving. We're trying to help them through this. Thank you for leaving us alone. Don't pull off our scab. We're going to heal. You know? I may be some small, you know, some, I'm not, not small. I may be some little woman from Kentucky, but I don't care if you are Maury Povich. I don't care who you are. Our kids are going to heal, and they're not going to be on your TV show just because that might be nifty nifty for somebody. They're not going to be bleeding on television for you. I'm sorry. You have everybody. They are. Some of them call a zillion times because they think this is going to get ratings for them. You have, to, you have to realize who your chicks are. Who are you protecting? You know, our kids got so tired of the media coming that they were giving them the one finger salute. <laughs> if you know what I mean. As we go through today, you probably have dealt with many more things than I even have in my lifetime. We've dealt with something that was just horrendous. I lived four more years at that school system dealing with things that were horrendous. Those babies' bodies, those babies went to hospitals and we had their names on them. The school had their names on them, but some of them had chest wounds and they had to pull off their clothes. And in the ER, I've talked to a lady who said, I didn't know this one child's name, and I had to call her Honey, 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 and I wanted to know her name. So when we met with the ER people later on, and we started planning, we said, okay, we're going to always write their name in permanent marker on their arm. So if they have to be, no matter where their wound is, we can know who that child is. And then that permanent marker is in the go kit. Do you see where I'm coming from? That was important. We, we talked about we don't want to put it on the foot or the toe because the child will think that they're toe tagging, that they're gone. So we don't want, and we talked about we don't want it on the forehead because a lot of times we have fevers. There are lots of places not to put it. We're going to put it on the arm where it will not be, not where they're going to have an IV, but just somewhere on the arm where we can find it. And it was going to be universal for us so we'd know. But we had our people at our ER know where we were going to do it. You get your people involved so everybody's on the same page. There are so many things. We had people coming out of the woodwork that wanted to be counselors the next day. We had people from every religion come. We had people from every school, every place you'd ever want to think that wanted to be a counselor the next day. Then we had people who write books that wanted to come the next day just to just watch. Little vultures, as I wanted to call them. So that they could say they were a part of it. You have to keep document, document, document everything. And if the, if the year before, the summer before, your counselors had already pre-trained or pre-certified certain people so that you made sure that you could say very kindly, to these people that come to your door. Thank you. Will you sign your name and your number? If I need you, I will call you back. But we have a certified list here that we have pre-trained. We will get back to you if we need you. Your senior class later on writes a thank you note to everybody on that list. Their name and their address. That is a writing experience for the senior class. But you didn't ever have to use them. Do you see where I'm coming from? That's authentic writing. Authentic writing is what one of those good things we have to do in academics. Those thank you notes are precious. We had food coming out of the wazoo. People wanted to send us food because they thought we needed it. We had people who wanted to come and give us massages. They said we were stressed. You know what? They were right. 
we were stressed, but we couldn't have just everybody on our campus. Do you, and somebody knew everybody because everybody's from a community. Do you, so we couldn't just have everybody that everybody knew because there'd be too many people running around. Do you see where we're coming from? So we had to be careful. We had to document everything. Our counselor the second day had to be the gatekeeper. He had to write down what er, every child went with certain people that wanted to go to a counselor, and he documented who they went with. So if Mama calls the second day, I didn't like who Mary Jane talked to. She said such and such, and I don't like it. Then you can say, okay, we're going to check and see who Mary Jane saw, and Mary Jane will never see that person again. Instead of, what you look like? Mm-hmm, that don't look good. You're not in charge. You know who Mary Jane saw, you're in charge. Do you, I don't mean to be scaring you. I just want you to be ready. And if I know a few things, I'll share them with you. Okay? Stand up. Go. Yeah. <laughs> you like it? I love it. Okay, stand up. Put your hands up real high. You chose to be here today. You're giving up other things, and tomorrow you'll have twice as much work. Pat yourself on the back. Yeah. All right. Yes. <laughs> All right, we are moving on to bigger and better things. If you didn't cry, that's okay. But if you weren't sad, I'm sorry. I wanted you to be sad this part. Okay, have a seat. We're going to move on. We're going to see what we can do to make this stuff better. Okay. All right. All right, let's move on. Why is safety important? You wouldn't be here. You didn't choose to be here if it's not important to you. You wouldn't be here. But you may have to say to parents sometime why safety is important. They just want their child to make straight A's, and they want, you know, they, they want Billie Jean to get on that bus in the morning. Well, they don't, y'all don't bus it. Just a few of them do. Okay. Yeah, I saw those buses. Okay. We want Billie Jean to get on, uh, walk to school, get the car ride into school, get in, you know, next door neighbors, get to school happy, come home happier, and with just a little bit more knowledge than they went that, the day before. Okay, but they sure don't want them to be any less physically well in any way. Or they're going to homeschool them. Mm-hmm. I'll just tell you that right now. We're not going to do that. We don't need them to homeschool them because then we're going to have a generation of people who cannot what? Cannot interact with others. And will all be online jobs. And that's, you know, I mean, if everybody has an online job, that's not going to work. I know we're the text generation, but there's a limit in there. Okay. Yes, there is. So if we're talking to parents, it's a matter of facts. Okay, I'm going to ask this lady right here to go to this microphone right here. I hope it's on. And would you just read for me that first little bullet? We're interactive today. All right, be ready. You never know where I'm coming next. (laughs) Woo! Okay. In America, on a daily basis, 15 children are killed by guns, 5,475 a year. Okay, go ahead and get the whole little section. Okay. 13 children are victims of homicide, 6 commit suicide. Does that bother you? Yes. I don't like that. I don't like that a bit. Let's look at the top right there. What does it say? Oh, no. Say it with me. Daily. Say it again. Daily, daily basis. So we get through today. Fifteen children are going to be killed by guns when we get through today. I like it. We got to change it. Now, I'm not saying in schools, am I? I'm just saying that's how many have been. Get- that's not good. That's not good. Our society it's got a little bit of a problem. Do you mind doing the next one? Because you're right here. See how easy that be? Leading. Leading causes of death under the age of 19: accidental, such as auto accidents, homicide, and suicide. Okay. Is that surprising to you? Accidental such as auto. Okay, we're invincible. You know. Homicide. That's not good. Where is disease? Not even up there, is it? You know, you see all these childhood cancer and all that. We say, oh, it's so sad, so awful. And it is. It's terrible. That's not even in the top three. But okay, if we're talking to parents, we don't want them to get all bent out of shape. Okay, so we got to have this last. This is my little disclaimer in here, okay? Okay? Okay, sir, would you read that last one? But if you don't read loud, you can just read loud. Okay. Fewer than 1% of deaths happen on school grounds. 
That was great. Okay. You got yeah, yeah, yeah. You you got a career in radio. Yeah, okay. I didn't say you had a radio face. I just said you had a career in radio. Okay. Woo! Done, done. Okay. Fewer than one percent of deaths happen on school grounds, okay? So what are we saying? We're saying schools are safer than anywhere else. We'll send them to church camp. We'll send them to Walmart. We'll send them, we'll send them, we'll take them to the zoo. We'll take them to a museum because we want to enrich their lives. But more things are going to happen all those places than at school. Okay. But not one person wants anything to happen at school and that's what CNN covers over and over and over again. So perception is a lot, is it not? Even though we don't want to lose one. Perception's big. More facts. Sir in the plum shirt. Would you read for us? According to the Department of Education, three million children are attacked each year at school. That's three million too many, isn't it? That's a lot. Is that a lot? Each month, read for me in the crimson shirt. Right here. Each month. Now, go ahead. Any of you uh, secondary teachers? Or no one? Okay, this is something I always say to a crowd. I had not done it yet, so I'm going to do it right now. When I count to five, I want you to say out loud the name of the person. And if you have to say two or three, that's your business. You want schools safe for. And while we're talking today, nothing is going to be too much work or too much time. If you think about that baby. Because it's going to be personal. You got where I'm coming from? Okay. Now, you say, well, now that takes too much time. That's do -do 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 -do. Not if it's for Shannon. Not if it's for Brittany. Not if it's for my fancy. Okay, you ready? And my kids always say when I say something to kids, is it on five or after five? <laughs> Don't you love them? Okay. Am I a teacher or what? Okay. Okay. After five. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Francie. Let's try one more time. I want to hear it loud and proud. One, two, three, four, five. Francie. I may ask you to say that again if we get to a little bit mm -mm -mm. when we're saying, okay, you got to fill this in. Uh -uh. You got to have this team. Uh -uh. You're going, mm -mm. I'm going, okay. Say that name. Because it's for them. Okay? Make it personal. Why in the mid-90s? Are we focused on school safety? Okay, first bullet. So with the plaid outfit and the grayish distinguished hair. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we all said it could not happen here. See, it was happening in some inner city places. It was happening in, uh, for, when I was growing up, you know, they had some problems in New York City. You know, and I was like, okay, I don't live in New York City. Okay, yeah, I did. My first year of teaching was Chicago. We're not going there. <laughs> but it was a wonderful experience. I enjoyed it very much. Okay, but all of a sudden, Things were happening in Jonesboro, Arkansas, Paducah, Kentucky, Mississippi. I know Bill Dotson, the superintendent of Pearl, Mississippi, very well. We've been to Washington three times together, Clinton administration. He had us up here. We were on this task force, okay? First time he ever got up to speak, he said, There are dentists in Pearl, Mississippi. Everybody said, Excuse me? He said, everybody on the television was a toothless wonder. <laughs> I just want them to sit them straight. His media people, just like our media people, tried to keep the media away from the ones we were protecting. And the ones that would be on the TV were the ones they got at the mall, the ones down at the quick pick, the ones, oh, the TV's on. Woo! <laughs> Interview me. You know the type. You know. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, let's follow them down the road. Maybe I'll do it again. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. 
Grandma out in California can see me and I don't have to pay for the three. Okay. okay, it happened here. It couldn't happen here. Geography of the school was different. Okay, dynamics, the demographics, the type of offenders were different. A lot of our, we had always thought it was people that were moving in. It was people that were in foster homes. We always thought it was the ones who had been moved 15,000 times. There wasn't any kids that had grown homegrown kids. We started seeing homegrown kids doing things that we thought, what's happening? Then, the media. The media. Sir, you look, you're paying attention too good. Would you do the last one for me? Media 24-7, cable and satellite, CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, Internet access to news. Do you think there was any difference when all of a sudden their claim to fame, if somebody did something, was all over television all the time instead of 6, noon, 6 and 10? I do. Used to we just got a little dose of the news on television. Now we got it. We, now we got it on the iPhone. We carry it with us. We have the news all the time. We have RSS feeds. We got news feeds every day, all day long. And if you want a little bit of fame, you just, most kids that are doing this, their fame would never be Nobel Peace Prize. And do you know if they did have the Nobel Peace Prize? I had one of my kids at school tell me this. He said, if we got the Nobel Peace Prize, Katie Kirk wouldn't be here. She's coming because it's what? They're coming because it's tragic. And it's sad. And it sells news. And then they cry. One of my babies I'd had sitting in my lap that I'd read Dr. Seuss to all my life and she'd just repeat it just like I did because she's a drama queen like I am. She sat next to me at the funeral and she said, I hadn't cried yet. I said, that's okay. She said, I'm standing right next to, and she named the girl's name. She said, she got shot right in the head. She said, I got brains on me. She said, I haven't cried yet. I said, you stand here right next to me because I'm crying enough for both of us. And I said, you'll cry when it's time. She said, somebody told me I, I didn't love her enough because I'm not crying. And I said, what do you mean you no, don't love her enough? I said, everybody cries at a different time, and you're just in shock. And it's okay. And we just held each other. And I got mad during the funeral because I'm sitting there hugging on her and acting like a blubbering idiot. And I see the Chicago Tribune guy down there trying to get notes from the family when there's a spot for the press. But I know who he is because I've been living with him for four days. Do you? And then there's another guy running after one of the teachers because she'd given somebody a B and that had been mentioned. She'd given a certain grade to a child. She, that had been mentioned in one of the little... PowerPoints about the children, and they were running after her to get a story after the funeral. They're vultures. Not all of them, but there's a bunch of them. So I think the media had a, had a part there. I do. Okay, move on. That's a piece of it right there. They look like little babies, don't they? They don't look like somebody walking in your hall that you'd have to say, now that's one to watch for. See? Did someone, one of them, okay. One of them in particular. <laughs> maybe two. <laughs> I'm just saying, in particular, I wouldn't maybe pick them out as much. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay. This is uh, last year's, this is, these are the totals over the last few years. These are for you. If you want to know more about this, you can look, I gave you a website. Uh, the only reason why I put this up there is the very top one was in a school where it was a girl shooting another girl at school. That's the first one. Because, you know, the Secret Service came out with there's no profile, but no girls have, done gir or have killed girls at school yet. Well, now we have it. Now we have it. God bless us. Uh, CBS News has some interactive stuff. That's off our website if you're interested. You say, you know... I'm not thinking we'll ever have what you had at your school. We're better than that. I, well, I hope you don't. I pray that you don't. I can't promise you you won't, but I hope you don't. But you might have something else. And you may have already had something else. J.W. told me about something that was uh, made me not sleep too good part of last night. Somebody propping the door open. Mm, somebody propping the door open. 
saved them a few steps, and then somebody got in and hurt somebody really bad. We just go on from there. What about snipers shooting from woods off your playground or a sniper between buildings? Maybe here in D.C. it might be between buildings or behind the house. What about a chemical spill out on the front road? Could you have those kind of things happen at your school maybe? What about a person enters a building and does not stop at the office? Do all yours, I mean, do they have to stop the office? The, t- the three I went in yesterday, they did. If they do, I'm proud of you. I'm not sure if every school is that way. I didn't see all your schools. That took more than one day, wouldn't it? Do students know what to do if they're in the bathroom and there's a lockdown? Or do they think they have to go back to their classroom? Little bees think they got to go back to their mama. Do, do they know they go in the first room they're supposed to be? Have we tried that? Have we practiced that with them? Have we said, now that we're in the bathroom, let's just talk about it. If there's a lockdown, children, we would go here to Miss So-and-So's room. She knows you're coming. She likes you. So-and-so, would you talk to them and say hi? Hi, ah, that's good. This is our restroom, and this is where you go. Big ones even think they're supposed to get back if you hadn't talked to them. you got to talk to them. I'm sure you have lockdowns at least once a year. In Kentucky, it is mandated. It took us two years to get a, a law. You have to have at least one lockdown a year. I don't think that's mandated here, but I'm assuming that you wouldn't think of doing anything else. I'm assuming you wouldn't think of having, doing anything else but one. And this is my suggestion, and I'm not suggesting an overload, I don't think. Two, and this is what I'm saying. One, that's normal, that everybody knows is coming, and one, when maybe they're in the cafeteria or maybe they're on some of them on a field trip coming home. I had one principal, I teach a class called Crisis Management in Educational Settings. I had a principal, she said, we had a tornado. Kindergarten in, and first grade in the lunchroom. She said, we did all everything we were supposed to. We looked good, we did it fast, we were proud of ourselves. We went back in and we played. Whose lunch is this? They didn't know where they sat. They couldn't remember which lunch it was. And said, if I had been home, if my kids had just, if I'd have just said, find a lunch and eat it, I'd have had 50 mothers on my case saying, surely you didn't have them eating somebody else's lunch. So what she decided to do, either they have to have assigned seats when they go to the lunchroom, or they made placemats they carry with them that's got their name and they slip it under every day. She's not going to have that happen again. But see, she didn't know. She didn't know. Crisis might have happened during lunch. CPR person in the classroom, does the teacher next door know they're the buddy? The CPR person is needed and they're the buddy and they're going to have to take her classroom too. They already know that. Is that already practiced? They already know they're the buddy. They're going to have two classes. Large disaster at school, does everybody realize that that will probably be two days? Because hospitals, hospitals and old folks' homes, nursing homes are going to get the first responders first. We're going to be third. Schools are... Does your cafeteria lady realize she's got to have enough stuff for three days? And if some of them are allergic to peanut butter, it can't just be peanut butter. Now think about it. When she goes home at 2.30, or he goes home at 2.30, I don't know if you've got a chef or you've got a, a lady cafeteria lady. When they go home at 2.30, 3.30, an hour before you do, do they realize they may be called back? Or do you know what the key is that these kids have to be fed because you have something going on? You know, these are just little questions in my head. Tornado comes. Parent comes and demands to take their child with them and the tornado is imminent upon you. Have you already talked to your parents at the beginning of the school year and said to your parents, if a tornado comes and we are in the middle of its path, you are welcome to be here if you live by our rules and keep your child and the other child that live in your house, whatever, here because we are a better building than any other building in this area. But we are not suggesting that you take them home in the path of a tornado. Tell them that at the beginning of the school year. Don't wait till the tornado comes and they say, my baby's going to be with me. I'm going to get in my little car that's made out of tin and I'm going to drive away from the tornado <laughs> to my home made of sticks. <laughs> and I'm not being ugly. I've had, and if they do that, and there will be some that will do that anyway. You have them sign, and you've got a sheet to do that because that's document, document, document because you're going to be liable later when that, those two flew away like Dorothy did in Kansas. <laughs> what do you say to the media when they ask you a question? If the media comes, 
Are we service-oriented people? Are we service-oriented? Yes, we are. Somebody comes to the door and says, who is that? And we say, that's Jimmy Jones. Well, good. That's great. We saw that one. That was Jimmy Jones. Okay. <gasps> Somebody with that telescopic lens is over there getting you saying, that's Jimmy Jones. You did not realize that Jimmy Jones had brought a gun to school. Okay? You didn't know that. They just got over there. They had all kinds of hoopla on the second floor and got the gun out of Jimmy Jones and stuff. And there's Jimmy Jones over here, and you just said, that's Jimmy Jones. CNN this tonight. The story. Pretty lady sits there and she says, okay, we've had this gun going on. And the student that was involved, and there you are, all sitting pretty. That's Jimmy Jones. That's Jimmy Jones. That's Jimmy Jones. You were there 50 times. You didn't know why you said that's Jimmy Jones. You are liable because he's 16 and he's not old enough for you to be telling who he is because that's confidentiality. Don't talk to anybody you don't know at school about any student because most of them are younger than 18. Okay, tell your people to shut up. <laughs> Who are those people up there? Do you know those people? Okay, I found me a librarian. I did. <laughs> she found a flip chart. <laughs> Mr. Pittman. Okay, plan. Look at data. Try to be prepared. Train. Where do we start? You don't have to start from zero. Brian and the team has got you way beyond zero. You're already to the 50 percentile. You're there. You're getting there. It is great. It is wonderful. What is weak in a district plan when there's no standardized form? When every school, you have how many schools in this district? 120 in the public, right? So we got oodles out here, right? We got oodles of schools represented today. When there's no standardized format, everybody decides to do their own stuff their own way, and then the first responders tell me how bad that is. Is that, is that just awful? Because you don't know. You come in and there's no incident commander. We're not using the same language. We're going, everything's just a hoodoo, isn't it? Nobody has plans. Some people have plans. You know, I mean, just nobody has floor plans. You can't find things. Lives are lost, possibly. It's, uh, it's bad, isn't it? It could be. It could be bad. It could be bad. It could be bad. It could be bad. Lack of consistency. Lack of consistency, coordination with the plans. Lack of interact state and regional and partnerships. We've got to have partnerships. Plans are not critiqued or tested on a regular basis. See, if we just put a plan in place and we just stick it in a book and we don't use it and it's not a living, breathing document, if it's not fluid, I like that word, if it's not fluid, if you don't change it to go with, if you've got a, spe- a, a needs list, if you've got a list of Students who need assistance. Little boy hurts his leg on soccer. soccer. And so he, he's hobbling the next day. He's going to have to have extra assistance if we're going to have some kind of a thing go on. So he's going to be put on that list for a while. He'll be taken off of that list, but that's fluid. Now, somebody who has diabetes is on there for a while. But it's fluid. People who move in and out, you've got to have them on the special needs list as they move in and out. If you're looking for the little boy that came to, to school in August on the special needs list, but he left in September. You're going to have a problem. you got to know that that is a current, up-to-date list. And because Brian and the group have got you something that's on computer and you can just change it up just real quick and easy, you don't have to always have it paper and typed up, it's going to be good for you. Okay. This is your book. How many of you have the red book with you today? If you don't, you get, you get to get a hold of your red book. Open your book! We got materials. How pretty is this stuff? I got to give my A plus on pretty, don't you? The one we got in Kentucky, we don't have it quite this slick as far as this. I think it's pretty. I took the pictures in it, but it's not quite this slick. Brian did it right. We got new challenges that schools face. I'm going to talk about this as we go along. Have we been dealing with pandemic issues lately? Okay, pass the trash to the inside and we will collect it. That's just a little management tip here. It's going to be green. We're going to recycle. (laughs) We're going to give it to Phelps Middle School, High School. I've been there. That's good. They're going to put it in their wind machine. We're going to look a little bit at, at section one, then we're going to go all over section three in a minute, okay? A little bit on section one. 
right at the beginning. I had a picture of Kermit the Frog laying flat. It said, celebrity dies, swine flu. <laughs> Who gave it to him? <laughs> I thought it was bad. I'm sorry. I thought that was so bad. I don't know. We get some of those emails, don't we? Lots of new challenges in school. When you turn to section one, if you flip over, I'm going to look with you a little bit just so that you can kind of. Okay. If you look to that first page, page three in section one, it says there's some new challenges. We got things we didn't have, we got cyberbullying. You know what that is? Let's take it a little further. We got sexting. You know what that is? That's texting pictures that are revealing. Our boyfriends asking girlfriends to take our picture and send it to their phone. Then they break up and the boy sends it to everybody. And then the boy's charged with trafficking pornography. And he's a sex offender now. So everybody loses. Everybody loses. Everybody loses. Okay, so we got we got new challenges. We got different kinds of challenges. I'm sure y'all have y'all don't have this at yours. We've got a lot of this at our schools. It's probably a Kentucky thing, bullying. <laughs> it's a cultural thing in the South. Y'all have that? I saw a little of that. I saw a little I saw an anti-bully campaign at one of the schools. I thought that was great. Some red ribbon week going on. I loved it. I loved it. I took pictures of it. I saw posters that said, we dream, we're not going to have bullying, we're going to, you know, we're going to be better. I loved it. We achieved. I loved, went to one school and it was all about respect. I wanted to be Aretha Franklin. I want to read. <laughs> she had the big letter, you know, R-E-S-B-C-T. I loved it. Respect yourself, respect others, respect my space. What's that about, bullying? Don't get in my face, respect my space. Do you, you know, I like that. I thought that was good. There's all kinds of things going on. New challenges, new challenges. You've got seven broad spectrums. On this PowerPoint, I don't know if you can see it or not, but you've got the PowerPoint, I think. It says section one, page four. I tried to make it go with your book, okay? If it says something on the PowerPoint, it'll kind of go with your... So page four, it says there are, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven broad sections. There they are. We're going to look at section three mainly. We're going to set up our school plan. You're here because you're going to set up, you're going to look at the school plan today mainly. But we've got to look at a little broad, broad overview of emergency response. Preparedness. Preparedness. It says page seven down here. So if you want to go with me, if you want to take an ink pen, you want to take a highlighter and kind of circle some things, that'd be great. Preparedness. Preparedness is the process of deciding what you will do in the event of emergency. You need to be prepared in case there is an emergency. Part of this we're going to talk about in just a second is mitigation. What can we do to prevent emergency? That's even better than that, isn't it? Even better. Okay, preparedness involves coordination of efforts between the local school district, individual schools, and the community at large. I added this at the bottom, and you can add it or not, but I just had to say practice, and it's in here over and over, but I just want to stick it up on this slide. Practice, practice, practice. Okay, if I practice something over and over, it will become a habit. If it becomes a habit, it's good. How many of you have been, and I'm not talking about my firemen up here, how many of you have been in a school fire? Please raise your hand. Okay, I see a smattering of about five people, and we've got a nice large crowd. How many of you have been in a fire drill once a month all the years you've ever been in a school? It's the law. Okay, but because you have practiced fire drills, you know what to do. You know where to go. You know how to line up. You know what you're doing. Practice makes perfect. We've heard that all our life, haven't we? Perfect, perfect practice makes perfect. Okay, that's even better, isn't it? Okay. That's right. A bad habit can continue. That's like writing your name wrong and you practice it wrong over and over. You've got to get it right. Okay, but practice is good. You know when the Secret Service, you remember Ronald Reagan was shot at... And there was a Secret Service guy. He knew his job. I just love people with these blackberries and all this kind of stuff hanging out there because I think they look like Secret Service used to. You know, I think it's so cool. You know, got all this stuff. You, you, know, you know, Reggie kind of looked like it yesterday. <laughs> you know, with this little thing on there. But anyway, anyway, Reagan 
there was, he heard the shh when he talks about it. This guy talks about it and he heard the shh. So he knew that that was a shot, the sound of a shot in the air. And he automatically, he didn't have time to think, covers the body. When you stop at a car, I mean you stop too quick and you have children in your car, your hand goes out. You do not think about putting your hand out. You don't go, oh, I need to put my hand out. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? There is no, it is hand out. I've done that. I've slapped people before. <laughs> and I have not meant to. These were adult people. I've been riding with adult people. Wham! Because I had to stop so quick and I didn't want anybody to hit the dash. You, you see what I'm saying? This is an automatic reflex. This is something that you do because you want to protect people. If you have these things in reflex, if you've practiced enough that it comes natural for you, if you are the person that needs to go and get the go kit when there's an emergency, you don't worry about where it is. It is in your hand before you even think. You have already gotten it. It's already in your hand. You're already at the command post without even thinking, where are we going? You're not standing there in the hall going, what we do, what we do, what we do, what we do, what we do. And somebody goes, I got the flip chart. Well, let's read it. <laughs> I don't know where mine is. Well, it didn't go with my decor in my room, so it's in my drawer. Do you, I'm in the jungle theme today. Do you, see, no, we can't do that. You know. Okay, practice, practice, practice. Preparedness. We got to know where our floor plans are. I have a fireman that turned teacher, turned principal. Fifth grade, big old bear of a man. Huge, huge. He stands uh, hidden. He's a, he's a treetop. And he's in one of these schools where they have a false ceiling. You know where those ceilings are kind of, they're lower and they're, they're tiled? He said, I'm going up into the ceiling. He was on his safe school committee. He was the head of his safe school committee. He went into the ceiling. He marked every classroom in the ceiling. He's, he's got a telephone drop up there. And he can get down into every classroom if there's an issue from the ceiling. Is that a hoot and a half? I was like, wow! I mean, that is smart. Is that good? He's just got little flags with the classrooms, what grade, where they are. If somebody's got an issue and they can't get through the halls, they can crawl up into the ceiling and they can go into any classroom and get access. Is that neat? We were talking about when you have this kind of an issue, when you have these kinds of problems... Your phones are tied up, people. Your cell phone towers are tied up, people. Do you know where you have a landline that you might not have thought of? Your fax machine. Your fax machine. Unplug that sucker and stick a phone in there. That's a landline. They can't tap into your landline like they can your cell phone or your just cordless wonder. The media is listening to everything. I can tell you that for a fact. Okay. Preparedness, stakeholders, school executives, health care. Think of all the people that need to be a part of this. Your church leaders, corrections officers, and even the media. Do you know why I could not alienate the media? I needed the media. They need to get our word out. They need to tell the parents where to come reunify with their kids. I need the media to tell the world, we're doing better. I need my local media to help me. I need to be partners with them beforehand, not just that day, close them out. I need to say, this is all I can give you right now. Legally, I can't give you anything else. This story now, we're, this is a crime scene, and this story is at the sheriff's office. I'm sorry. Right now, it's not my story to give. They are investigating homicide. And I could cry to tell you that. Response. Is the process of implementing appropriate actions while an emergency situation is unfolding. In short, response means doing what you plan to do. Fast, expedient, orderly fashion. Do what you plan to do. That's your response. Okay? Here it is. We've trained, we've trained, we've trained. We've done tabletop exercises. Okay? We've had the we've been really good. We had fire department come in and just do a whole we've had full scale. That's been really good because afterwards we learned we had a full scale in one of our counties and we learned that there were some issues with our couple of our first responders had some issues that they worked out that they said we have never worked together before and now we know how to work together that was wonderful they said we're going to work together once a year so we know what to do who's in charge of what piece and we always just one of us usually got there and the other one didn't and we always were just always in charge and it just worked it was just such a mesh and they said we have learned so much by having this exercise and said we did they did it in an alternative school to start with a small school 
And then they moved to the high school. The next year, they wanted to move to the high school. I think that's so smart. They told the students. They had students there. We're going to do this. They planted a kid. He had a rubber gun. Not a real gun. A rubber gun. But it was really good, and the kids were scared to death. You know, that didn't hurt them either. I mean, just a little of that, but they told parents ahead of time because it was a small area so that parents were not afraid. And the parents are all on board. They said, we want you to practice. Who's that? That's a hard-working man yesterday. He said, don't take my picture yesterday. I said, you worked hard yesterday. You had to take that jacket off. Okay. Mitigation. Mitigation means can we do anything to reduce loss? Okay, if we're going to have an um, earthquake... We live in the New Madrid Fault, where I live, and, and, and they keep saying, we're going to have an earthquake, we're going to have an earthquake, we're going to have an earthquake. And I said, it's not my fault. No. <laughs> but, uh, no. Okay. But if we can screw the bookshelves to the wall, we're keeping the bookshelves from falling on a kid. That's mitigation. Okay? If we can, if we have swinging lights in our schools, look at that little thing right there. Okay, look at these things hanging from the ceiling. They're just fantastic and dandy, aren't they? Okay, but I, if they swing far enough, either way, they'll hit the ceiling, but I don't think there's anything. If, that, if there's not a glass issue, we're okay. If you have big glass bulbs up in something, and they're in a room, and there's an earthquake, that glass can shatter. FEMA's got such wonderful things on their website, where it's simulations where you can read to the children what is going to happen, and they can get under their seats and they can pretend, and they can hold on to their desk, and they can pretend that they're shaking, and somebody's at the door counting to four, and counting to ten, and, and everything that's going on, just like if it was an earthquake, and then the aftershocks, it talks about the aftershocks and what's going to happen. Go to the FEMA website. Find all those simulations. They are wonderful. And the kids, I say, do that over the loudspeaker and say, we're going to do this, like March 8th, when it's time, during the time that we could have the earthquake stuff, the tremor to stuff. It is really neat. Prepare your kids. Our kids are smart. Get them involved. You're going to have a substitute one day unless you are just super unsick. You're going to have a substitute. And do you know that crises don't happen on only days when everybody's here? You need a kid in every class to kind of know where all your stuff is, even if you try to leave everything out. And a kid in every class is smart enough to kind of know where things are. And a second grader can say, I tell you what, she keeps all her stuff right here. You don't have to be a 10th grader to be able to do that. You've got one little somebody, boy or girl, that can tell you where everything is if you just enable them. Empower your children. Empower your children. There's a piece in the back of this book under section 5 called Threat Assessment. It's eight pages long. If you see a second grader and you say in the teacher's lounge sipping coffee and drinking che- and eating cheese, that commodity stuff, and you're saying, okay, that child's going to be in jail when he gets in the eighth grade. I can see it in him. His brother was. His mother is. He's going to be. Don't say that. Find out what underlying problem you're seeing in this child and do something about it. Bring in somebody to help him. Don't just say that and just deal with it. Don't just predict what's going to happen to him. Help that child. This threat assessment, these pages are on threat assessment, just say, what do I see? Is he fidgety? You don't have to kind of think of what's wrong with him. There's just some things you can go ahead and check. Is he fidgety? Does he do this? Does he do that? Sit with a counselor. Sit with a principal. Say, I love this baby, but he's got issues. I'm not sure what they are, but let's look together and let's look on these pages because somebody smarter than me came up with all these issues. And you just check those issues and then say, there's a place where it says, let's bring in the parents. What kind of issues he got at home? Okay, second, okay, so we got second graders. We're looking at trying not to put the label at risk on to say, can we help a child at second grade? Do you, can we help a child there before they get to middle school and nobody even has them in homeroom long enough to spit on them? Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Because right in second grade, you got them all day long. You know them. They're your babies still. You might could bring in some help, some people from the community to help. Maybe they need a mentor. Maybe there's somebody out in the community that wants to come be their mentor. Big sister, little sister. You know something. 
Let's just don't throw them away by saying in the lower green and call it. He's going to be in jail too. Okay. What's that? That's mitigation. That's working before instead of after. Okay. All right. We need to keep them in school because ADA, don't we? What's that? We call it, that's money. Oh, all right. Thank you. I got a, I got a little 10 minute thing. Well, this activity, we're getting ready for a break, people. And I know you can't wait. All right. I'm kind of looking forward to it myself. Okay. Emergency response protocols. You're going to have those at the back on fire. We're not even going to go through those because y'all are good readers. Y'all can read those by yourself. We're going to go through the, the plan, but not the protocols. You're going to read those for yourself. Everything from bomb threats to terrorism. When I first went through this bomb threat stuff, it even says, what did the voice sound like? I wouldn't have thought to look. If you hadn't read over that, I wouldn't know to think about that till afterwards, and I'd be all flustered. I need to read when I need to know about bomb threats before there is one. And you know what? We thought we were so cool at one school. We said, okay, our assembly place, if we have to move from the building, is at First Church of God down the street. And we've told all our parents that's where we're going if we have a bomb threat. We've told all everybody, we all got we got an MOA. We got that memorandum agreement. Everybody knows where we're going. Had the bomb threat. Ninth grader did it. He's tired of school that day. Okay? When we get to the first assembly, they got a bomb. They got a package there that looked like a bomb. It wasn't a bomb. But they had a package there because they thought that would be cute. So what we got to do, we got to have ABC and we don't tell them where ABC is until it happens. Then we have the reunification plan and we're going to tell them where it's going to be. We tell you we've got it decided. We make you know perception-wise we got our plan. We know where we're going. We are all ready. We'll let you know if something happens. Because we don't want it to be the real thing and some guy to know outside or some woman to know that's got something going on or some something loose. Every time I take a step forward, I have to take a step back. Because they always kind of undo something that I thought was really good. You know, like, woo! Okay, step back. Universal procedures. If you look at a pink page, it's in your book on page nine, but it's also in your packet right here. And I suggest you laminate this sucker and stick it on the wall in every classroom. Why? Because you might have to do one of them for any any one reason. That's why I asked Brian. I said, Brian, could you pull those out and put them in a color? These are things we're going to go over a little bit, but if you have to evacuate, if you have alert status, lockdown, shelter in place, severe weather warnings, or drop, cover, and hold. Have y'all seen these before? Are these new to you? These are new? Okay. All right, then we'll talk about them a little bit. In these next few minutes, in this next five minutes. Ah, okay. Well, let's look at the first one anyway. First one. Okay. And section four, page 11 is where you find this in your book, but I want to give it to you in the pink, okay? Extra. Oop. I don't think, maybe I'm not too. I have these separated out. We will talk about in a minute. Let's just go where I am here. We will get to them because I have them separated out. Page 11 in your book has levels of emergency. A level one emergency is a school level emergency. If somebody has an allergic reaction to a bumblebee outside, do you call the chancellor? <laughs> I got a real nice one. That is probably not protocol, is it? No. Okay, are these two little lovely people that were down here earlier probably don't need to call from a teacher, do they? Okay, there are there are chains of command, are there not? There's protocols on who calls what when. Level ones, level ones are school-based problems. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into our three. Level two are system problems, a major fire. Okay, more than one site might be involved in something. Okay, when we get to level two, when we get into the third section here, we're going to talk about what you have to say when you call in level two. A level one will be reported, but it doesn't have to be that moment. 
Okay, because you've got to deal with the problem. It's your site. You take care of it. Level three is a district site. Okay, earthquake, multiple sites. We talked about this. You won't be the first responder's first job probably. If this is if something like an earthquake, something like the tornado is coming through the whole town, unless it just hits your area. You know how they kind of just come and sit and then leave. You may be it, but you probably won't be if it's something this big. Or a terrorist attack. Okay? You saw Katrina. That was rough. No, it was just rough. I didn't want to think about all of that. I mean, it's just... It was just so sad. We cried and cried for days and days and weeks and weeks and still crying for them. All right. Two and three, we're going to have to immediately get the executive team together. And this will be our last thing before we stop. Moral responsibilities and legal aspects. When you sign your contract... People need to realize everybody who has a contract with your school system, charter, private, public, whatever, they need to realize it is their moral responsibility and their legal responsibility to take care of the children. If that means you need to have a home plan for those couple of days, if we have that big disaster, you have that home plan. Because those 25 children that are in your care, or that 500 because you're a principal that are in your care, have to take precedence. And if there's somebody that you can release to go home to take care of a mother that's ailing, but somebody else can take care of two classes, that's something you've already pre-planned for. And it's not something you're squabbling over during a crisis. And if somebody says, I just don't think I can do that, you can say, there are 250 applicants. Thank you very much. I'll be talking to you later. Because kids come first here. We just finished legal aspects. We just kind of touched it for a minute, but I did tell you a little earlier that a year and a day, we had the big memorial. We had all the media. We had all the parents. We had a major, major traffic jam at our school. We had uh, one of our funeral homes had donated a tombstone to put out in front of the school. Yeah, me too. That's another thing you need to be careful with, how you memorialize and what you accept because you don't know how not to. You kind of have to have a rule of where you'll put what. We eventually put some, a, a garden in the back which was so much nicer and softer. Do you, and the uh, tombstone left the front. Do you, but that took three years. Because <laughs> that hurt some parents' feelings when it left. Because it was at least seen as people passed. And that was, you know, just so, there's so many things. There's so many feelings involved. So many. We had uh, the lady from Oregon. I don't know if you remember the situation where there was Kip Kinkle, a little boy, who... Uh, took the life of his parents and then went to school and then took the lives of some other children. And they had seven, eight years before they could even memorialize because his parents were teachers but not at the school where he killed children, where he went to school. And they wanted to have a memorial for his parents and the children that died and the parents did thought that the parents of this young man had raised this monster and they didn't want him the memorial to include the one, them, the parents that died and then some said, but they were victims too. And there was such an issue that took seven years for them to do something. And what it ended up happening, from what I understand, is there was a memorial at the school where the children's passed for them and a memorial at the school where the parents taught for them. It was just, but it was, there's a lot of <sighs> nerves and, and feelings and grief. Everybody grieves in a different way. When they take you in, uh, well, we went to the library. When they take you into the library and they say, uh, you need to notify your homeowner's insurance because your 
Ours is KEA, Kentucky Education Association Insurance, our KEA and our NEA. It's not going to be enough. You know there's something big about to happen. So somebody might say, you know, we don't have to have this plan in our school because this is a piece of paper that we probably don't have to do, that it's not a mandate somewhere in our handbook. When you go back and you have a little opposition when you're asking some people to come on board, at the very tail end, if you can't get them to come with you because they love children and come with you because they see the need and come with you because it's the right thing to do, whop on at the end, come with me because there's liability attached if you don't. Okay? All right. Section 3. Go with me. on sec- Go to Section 3 in your book. you got the neatest little tabs. Neatest little tabs in your book. Uh-huh. That's Brian. Give him a hand. I, he needs one one hand. As we would say in elementary school, give him, let me put this here, a round of applause. All right. Oh, that's good for you, isn't it? <laughs> oh, they love it. All right. I need a principal to volunteer to come up here. What principal wants to be up? Uh, Loud and proud. Come on. Just for a minute. Who is it? Come on. Which one? Do I have a principal over here on this side? All right. All right. Come up here, woman. Just for a second. Yeah. Yeah. You're the only one raise your hand. Only principal. You're the only principal in the house. I want you to hold this dollar. You get a dollar. You want a dollar today. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay. You know why she's up here? Because honestly, at the level one, at the school level, the buck. Finish this for me. The buck. Stop here. All right. All right. You want to sit down? Thank you so very much. Thank All right. You know what's yours? Oh, thank you. Ah! <laughs> All right. All righty. See, it didn't hurt. Didn't hurt. Didn't hurt. I just want you to know the principal oversees the formation of the school emergency response team. The principal oversees a lot of stuff in this book. If you're not the principal, when you go back, you're going to say, Principal, you should have been there. Okay. Let me tell you, your job's big, baby. Okay. If you'd have been there, you'd have, you'd have seen that it was big. Okay. On page six, there's a lot of good stuff before page six, but we're going to move through to page six right now. We're going to see that the CERT, from now it's going to be called the CERT. And what does CERT stand for? Say it with me. You're good. You're real good. Okay. School Emergency Response Team. Okay. And the next little thing tells you about how many members are on this. Five to eleven. eleven Depends on what size your school is. Doesn't mean that you don't train everybody. It just means that there are at least five to eleven and there's redundancy. Let's see what that last one says. Remember redundancy. What does redundancy mean to you? Okay, redundancy in this respect is there is a person that's in charge, but he may be out at an executive meeting. So we got somebody else who knows what to do if he's out. And then when he's sick and he's out, then he knows what to do. So we're going to be three deep. Three deep. Say it with me. Three deep. Okay, we're going to have... In charge, the next guy knows how to be in charge, and the next guy knows how to be in charge if that guy in charge and that guy in charge aren't there. Okay? Redundancy. Okay? Because when this, this guy right here, this fire marshal, when he shows up, you're not going to say, well, the big guy's out. I don't know what to do. He's at the board office. Okay? He's being bored at the... No, he's at the board. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Steps for cert, cert formation. What was that cert again? School. Oh, I tell you what, this side is winning. Okay. All right. Steps. Okay, staff skills inventory. We're going to turn to that in a minute. That's going to be farther in this book and is a page that you're going to fill out. I suggest at the beginning of the school year, every staff member and any new one that comes on fills out the staff skills inventory. And what that, we're going to see that in a minute. You're moving too fast, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's okay. 
Some people are just overachievers, aren't they? Okay, all right. That's good. That's good. And this is going to tell us what skills people have. If somebody has, raise your hand if you have CPR training. I hope it's everybody. If you don't, just kind of hide your head. That's all right. You can get it. Okay, it's not hard. Okay. You need to know who in your staff has CPR training. You need to know who's bilingual. You need to know who has ever used a defibrillator. You need to know who in the summer is on the EMT training team. You may have some people that do things, you know, that are on teams that you don't know. You don't know their spare life, and especially if you've got new teachers. New teachers, you don't know. So we're going to have all our staff fill this out at the beginning of the school year, and when we have a new staff member come in, we're going to have them fill it out. And at the bottom, it's going to say something about or anything else that might be relevant so they can come up with something that you didn't even think about, which is great. And you're going to look at it and you're going to sell this like it's an opportunity, like it's an opportunity, not a job. You get to be on the cert. You are selected for the team. It is an honor. And you're going to publicize this well. You see what I'm saying? This on your website, and I looked. Some of you don't have one. Okay, I'm techie. We need one. Okay, if you don't have one, let's find somebody who can do that for you. Okay, that's another thing. If they have some tech skills, they can be part of this team. Okay, have tech skills. Okay, right after you got your principal, your assistant principal, your counselor, and all that administrative team, the next team is your cert team. And they're all getting a little kudo for being on this team. Okay? That's good. All right. Give them some kudos. Doesn't cost nothing. That's right. All right. Then it says you're going to cover all the areas of need. You may have somebody that's going to be real resistant to all this. I'm not working a moment over. I'm not working a moment under. You're not going to have me do anything I'm not supposed to do. My job is to teach. Don't tell me what else to do. I teach math, and that's all I'm teaching. I'm sorry, honey. You teach children math. And we got to take care of children. Okay? They might need to have... Be selected. And you might need to build them up and say, Oh, I've got something I would love for you to be in charge of. <laughs> you get to direct other people. They kind of like to be in charge of something. You need to just finesse them into this. Finesse them. Make this a very positive thing in your school instead of going back saying, Oh, we got more work than we know what to do with. Yep, it's going to take a little work, but it's going to be well worth it, okay? Finesse them. You're going to have to hold team meetings then you're going to have to do something else. You're going to have to fill vacancies. What if somebody in the middle of the year moves that's good at CPR and you needed them on the CPR part? You're going to have to find somebody else to fill them? Or are you just going to go on the rest of the year? Oh, we did that at the beginning of the year and we'll do it again because it's an annual thing. No, 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 no. You need to meet monthly. This group needs to meet monthly. There's going to be things we're going to do. We're going to talk about what they need to do monthly. This group needs to meet monthly. If you meet monthly, you're going to know if you've got a hole in the group. Okay? If somebody is absent every time you meet, you need somebody else on your team. Redundancy. Maybe you need to move the redundancy up to the top and let the other person be the redundant one. Okay, we might need to rotate. You've got to start to develop your plan. Conduct formal presentation. This is part of what it says you have to do. Once you've got your team in place... You've got to go back to your faculty, and we're talking the whole faculty and staff. I'm not talking teachers only. Why would your staff need to be included? Excuse me? I heard somebody said they need to be informed. Why? Are we a team? If a crisis happens to your school, will all the staff that are not teachers just get to run home? <laughs> I know. Do you know they may be more, more integral than you would ever think about being? A custodian knows your facility and can turn off the gas maybe better than you would ever think about being able to do or the water line or know where you can stop. If they turn the water line off, they know that maybe in the hot water heater there is water there for a while that, that is drinkable. Or he knows how to get that water before something happens. He knows all those things that you never thought about knowing. 
What about your cafeteria lady? She gets to go home, y'all have no food. <laughs> See what I'm saying? She knows where the gas comes in, where they have gas cookers. She knows how to turn that off. Do you know? I don't know. That wasn't my job. She wouldn't let me touch it if it was. Do you? They got possession and ownership. Does your staff need to be a part of this? Yes. Do some of them need to be on the team? I'm thinking that's smart. Part of your team needs to be teachers. Part of your team needs to be staff members. Part of your team needs to be first responders so they know all about your school and they're your lunch buddies. Another part of your team, if you're at middle school and high and possibly if you're really bright elementary kids, one or two kids. How smart would that be? They don't have to be there every time of the month, but if they could be there every now and then, they have insight that you don't have. They know what's going on in the community that you don't know. They can tell you about something that went on on the weekend that you better be ready when Monday morning hits. Isn't that true? They are smart. Or they can say, we had them on our team after our, after our big one. Uh, we dealt with a lot of small ones, but after our big loss of life. We put our kids on them. Our kid says, we do not want bars on our school. We do not want to go to prison. We do not want to go to school in prison. So we took that into account. That doesn't mean because they said it, we wouldn't do it. It's just we took into account what they think. And we wanted, we told them, go back and poll your students. They'll just talk from one voice. We said these children need to be voices of the other students. Go back and talk to the friends. Come back and tell us what they think. Because we need, we need student input. Does that make sense? Okay. You know what? They will help you with student input. They did not want... They did not want... Uh, I know you have metal detectors. I think that's great. We have metal detectors that were handheld that we could use when we wanted to and we used them at random and when we needed to. We also had backpack checks because we did not have the money for what you've got, which is wonderful. So it was a time-consuming diddle to have to backpack check. You think about it. Mm, every teacher involved in life good. Guess what time it is? It's the backpack check. Oh, we were all excited. The, okay. We had backpack checks. You have this other item which is even better. But they said, we don't want, to, we don't want all this kind of stuff. said, you know what I'll do, Miss McChristian? They'd tell me stuff because I'd had them in school. They said, you know what we'll do? said, we'll raise a window and we'll stick something in just to show you we can. And we don't even want to take an after school. So we're just going to show you we can and we want to. And I don't even want to. So what I said is, let's come together. Let's talk about it, and we're going to tell you why you don't need it there. Because it's not just you that's going to have If you have it there, somebody else who might want it there might do something bad. And you're just proving a point to me, but you wouldn't hurt me for the world. But somebody else gets a hold of that, that weapon's in school. You can't do that. You could be cute to do that. You think that's sharp to do that. You can't do that. I can't bring something to school that would hurt another person, even if I wouldn't hurt another person, because somebody else could get a hold of it. See, that's irresponsible, and you're not an irresponsible student. Okay? So you've got to talk to them. You've got to talk. You've got to have open communication. Build in redundancy. This is the fun pages. Pages 8. we got, we got names. This is incident command. You're going to say, oh, this is scary. Yeah, it is. Page eight. I'm going to try to put this in layman terms. You're going to say, what? Okay, page eight. All right. I've written all kinds of stuff. Okay, number one. We've already talked about number one. Incident commander. The book stops here. Responsible for... Young man, would you go right there and tell us what, or just read real loud, what they're responsible for, that first one. Responsible for the development of the school plan and overall management of emergency situation. Establish, manage, command roles, activates, search, determine strategies to implement protocols, and adopt as needed. Okay, so what we're saying is the incident commander is the one in charge and usually in a school who is that? Principal. Principal. So when you go online and you fill out who this is going to be because we're going to have this online and we're going to have a little spot to put the person who's in charge, the incident commander, you're going to put the principal's name. 
Do you have vice principals? Does every school have a assistant principal or a vice principal probably? No. Oh, good. That's lovely. Okay. If not, because we didn't, so I'm just asking. Okay. There's probably someone else in your school that could handle the stress. Or a counselor. Or someone else who is located in an area that you know they're the type that can handle this if you are out. You have to, when you're gone, you think of them as the master teacher. You think of them as the master person in charge. That's the number two redundancy. Number three redundancy is the next one down the road. When you're doing any of this planning, make sure they get the memo. Got it? If they can't always be at the meeting, they get the memo. All right? All right, we're good. Number two, public safety liaison, SRO or teacher. Okay, this is the public, this is the mouth. Okay, this is the one. I'm good at this. I'm good at some of these. Some of these I'm not too good at. But this is the one that's a community person, the one that's out there, the one that lives in your community, the one who likes everybody, knows all the parents. Okay, read to me, sir, what it says right here beside that. Develop working knowledge of local regional agencies, serve as primary on-scene contact for outside agencies assigned to an, to an incident, assist in assessing services when need arises, document activities. Okay, so my job in my school, if I'm this person, and this could be somebody, that a librarian would be good at this. Okay, if your librarian is, a, librarian is a, out there kind of a person. Or a music teacher would be good at this. Somebody who might not have quite as much responsibility with a full class as someone else. Maybe a music teacher who has to be out getting funds, band booster kind of stuff. They need to be best friend with this guy right here. They need to know the contact with every first responder contacts, the name of who they are. So when these people come on site, they need to go meet them. They need to have them in for their lunch bunch. They need to plan a lunch appreciation for first responders. They need to know what they look like. So when these people come into the school, they already know to look for that person. Okay? That person is the one that helps them with anything they need. We need this. We need that. We need that. They know to go to that person. That's the community liaison person. You're going to see a theme in this page. Every one of them from number two down says document, document, what? Document. It's kind of like with real estate, location, location, location. Okay, why do you need to document everything that's going on? Excuse me? Because if you don't, it didn't happen. It either didn't happen or you're going to be legally binding for something. Right? It, gives, it also lets you sleep at night. You are so right. Okay, you're going to have this working knowledge with your first responders. And you're going to be the one that can help them when you have something going on. You're also the one that says, okay, you would like to have the drug dogs in my school. I would love for you to come on a weekend. Or you can come during the day. I'm having a little issue with uh, some of my kids. I'm a little worried about them anyway. A uh, principal has asked me to ask you to come in and just do an exercise just for fun. We're not going to tell the kids we're doing it. But we're going to do it. And then the kids say, what's going on out there? What's going on out there? Y'all go into lockdown. And what's going on out there? Oh, I'm hearing dogs out there. What's going on? We're having a little exercise. Our police asked to use our building for a little few minutes just to do an exercise with the drug dogs. Do you... Nobody, nobody get worried. We're going to go ahead with education as usual. A little sweat popping out here and there. But it's okay. You know, it's a good thing, isn't it? But what we've done is we've got this working relationship. Now, if you have an SRO that wants to be that, that's great. But you know what I'm saying? Do you see this as, if a teacher's involved with this, do you see that as a neat thing? Do you see a different relationship being built that, that SROs are already great with first responders? They talk their language, and that's great, but I think a teacher needs to help talk their language. So I'm saying redundancy, we have an SRO and a teacher of some sort. So there's that redundancy. See where I'm coming from? I like the lunch buddy thing. Get, to, get, them in, get the kids to see them in another way. First responders, besides just bringing the fire truck to school once a year to get to play on the ladder. Okay. But that's a good thing. I mean, we love to play on that. Okay. Somebody's good with numbers in your school or we wouldn't have good math numbers, right? Your math numbers coming up? I saw that. I've read everything the chancellor puts out. I, I went on your website. I thought, I need to know about D.C. school system. I'm coming to see you people. So they say your numbers are coming up. I'm proud to hear it. That's a good thing. I'm not saying individually. I'm not sure. But I know as a mass, you're doing good. 
All right. Somebody's good with numbers needs to be in charge of this next one. This next one, this person is in charge, and we've got all kinds of sheets that they need to fill out. But release, how you release kids, who's here today, emergency release, emergency attendance, where are my babies all the time? Every mom, every child is precious. You say, I just lost one. That's not good enough. You, losing one is not good enough if that's my what? Say the name of the one. Who is it though? Remember we said one, two, three, four, five. Who is it? If you lost two. Okay, that wouldn't be good enough, would it? But we only lost Brooke. We did good, didn't we? That was 99 points. 98. Now, wasn't that good? We only lost Brooke. Oh, we don't know where she is. She's probably in the bathroom somewhere. It's no big deal. She'll be back in a while. If Brooke is mine, I don't give a rip about the rest of them. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm a mama on a mission. And your tail is mine. That's all I got to say. All right. This person's got a lot to do, and they've got to keep a lot of numbers. They're going to have to keep up with where everybody is. They've got to know what special needs, and we've just talked out in the hall. They've got to know which special needs kid is where when, so they know who needs help when we have this thing that's going on. If you've got a facility that's just special needs, we've got issues. If you've got a facility that is second floor and elevator issues, somebody's going to be packing that child down. We already, already got to know who's going to be packing that child down. Okay, what if we can't pack the wheelchair because it's motorized and it's just too heavy? Then what are we going to do? Do we have any kind of wheelchair on the bottom floor that we can at least push in an emergency? We got one. You can get donated ones. You know, just a push-in wheelchair. Have one or two in the ba bottom floor just put in a closet somewhere. A nurse's office for those kids that can hobble because they broke their leg but can't hobble quick enough if we're getting out of there fast. You, those are things you don't think about till the time, but if we talked about them today, maybe you do. So that's good. That's the occupant accounting coordinator. And I would say that person needs to be pretty analytical. Numbers. I'd say mathy. All right? That's just, that's me. Okay. It says under here, it could be a counselor, but the counselor's got so many jobs coming up. That's a possibility. Unless you've got a bunch of counselors, I'm thinking I'm going to save them for somebody else. Okay, next one is facilities coordinator, chief custodian. They know all when it comes to facilities. Brian's got this for you to go to in a minute online to fill out. where You're going to have your floor plan online for them already. You're going to be able to draw. It is so cool. If you like tech stuff. And if you've got a kid that likes tech stuff that wants to be on your team and might want to do some of this with it, you can put in the paths they go to the fire drills, the paths they go to everything. I mean, it's going to be just too cool where everything's located. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you want us to put our floor plans? That's when the person puts their floor plans from school online. Now, I have a question. Is that a safety issue? Because no, because it's going to be safety locked. Okay. Everything's safety locked. And we'll talk about that. First responders have certain level of security that they can get into. You as a principal have certain level of security where you can get into. The only person that the mainframe can get into all of it will be Brian or the people working with Brian that can get into every school. But it has levels of lock, and thank you for asking that. It's very, very secure. It will not be open to the public. We would not do that, but that's a good thought. Okay? Chime in anytime you need to. All right. I'm saying your praises, but chime in. All right. Uh, facilities here. We've got, you need to know what gates need to be locked. Another thing with facilities, you may have somebody that needs to run out and put cones at certain places. If we had had certain people to go in their car and put cones at the end of our road that's two, two lane, because we have a major highway at one end that our EMTs came down. We just had the small road for a little while. So if we, well, it was a mile or two. But I'm just saying, if we'd had cones down there and said that we would not let it, and somebody's sitting down there and not let anybody in until the EMTs came, and somebody already knew that was their job, that's another facility kind of an issue. We could have had a custodial person do that for us because that their job was not to be in a classroom with students at the time. So that would have been fantastic if we could have done that. Do you see where I'm coming from? So if we already know that we are in an area where we need that, that's a good thing. So that is that person's 
job along with cutting off the gas, cutting off the water, whatever might need to be cut off, knowing the floor plans. See, you may think, okay, I got my go kit, I got my stuff, my command post is down there. We're going to talk about command post in a minute. Command post is down there in the lobby, right there by the front door. That's a good thing. And let's say the terrorist comes in and holds the principal hostage. You got nothing safety anywhere else in your building. I got one building in Baduca that's got three go kits, one in the gym, one on the second floor in the math department, and one downstairs in the office. So they got three areas that they only know are their command posts, and they got three go kits going on. You don't have to just have one. He's going to give you one. You can come up with two more. It's called a prototype. You see how that works? There you go. I like it. It is not the be all end all. It's the beginning of all. All right. Very good. Triage coordinator. Do you have school nurses? Yes. That is that is fabulous. That is you could pat yourself on the back for that. That is wonderful. If every school has a school nurse, that is fabulous. Not every school does. When we had our tragedy, we had one school nurse for three schools. An elementary, a middle, and a high had one school nurse. She was not in the building. She it wasn't far. She got there. She says, I'm not trained in triage. She said, I've had the training, but she said, that's not my daily job. She still struggles with who she sent. She still struggles. It's tough. It's really tough when you have children down and that's not what you normally do. We had CPR trained people that were in the lobby. They were called for in the lobby. This was before school. Do we know that other people go straight as a buddy to the next room and they just know? Do the kids already know? We're going to come to that next room. You're going to go over to an English person who's trained in CPR. She's going to be called to wherever the issue is, wherever we're having the issue. And that class is going into the other class. They already know it. We had a cousin to a child that was is now a paraplegic. We had a cousin in a classroom that was very close to the lobby where our situation happened who wanted out so bad when we had our lockdown because we hadn't practiced lockdowns. This was 97, okay? He wanted out so bad, he was about ready to throw something at the door. He said, I think I can do something to help her. Do you, it's, it's primal instinct. Do you know what it is? But if he had been in lockdowns many times, he would have been used to, he's not going to get out. Do you, he knows why. We need to practice for those reasons. Kids need to be aware that we're doing this for your benefit and theirs. If you're in the way, somebody else may not be able to get to them and help them. All right, triage, first aid. Told you about signing. Whatever you want to do on putting the name of the child, making sure when they go, get you some counselors at your, from maybe other schools to go be at your hospitals waiting. That might be something that you might want to think about to wait for the parents or any kids that are released from school to go to hospitals that need somebody from your school system there. You need somebody to represent your school system to be there and to pat on a parent and say, I'm here. Come here. Let me hold your hand. Let me be here with you. Because they're, they're going through something that they've never gone through before and you hadn't either. You see where I'm coming from? They don't need to be alone at a hospital with nobody from your school system there. And counselors are made for that. We didn't call them our grief team. We didn't call them our crisis team. We called them our recovery team. It just was an easier word because we're there to help them recover even though there's more to come. Okay? All right. Next page. Yours the same page. Mine's the next page. I couldn't get it all on one. All right? <laughs> I was making sales in the middle of the night. All right. Media was a liaison, and that was a big part of my job. So I'm going to tell you, you need to find the biggest bulldog you got at school. Okay. They need to be kind, but they need to be firm. And you don't get some little weaselly person to do this job. You need somebody who's willing to look somebody in the face and say, if you do not stay in the designated area, you will not get the press release, you will not get the story, and you will be carted off our property. Thank you. Now, I had one from each school, and I did not have redundancy earlier. You know, oh, I'm sorry, I'm teaching you what I didn't know. Okay. 
And I, ta I was talking to these people, and I'd bring them in one month, 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 and we were talking, and this one girl said, I'm scared. She's a, she's a bulldog, but she still, she said, I can do it to you, and we can practice. We're doing it like you used to do there. Get up and do the scenarios. You know, I'd say, okay, let's do a scenario. And they get up. She said, I can do it here, but I don't know if I can do it when it's the real thing. And we had a badge that said, I made up a badge that said media contact on it so that everybody would know that's the media contact. On the back of it had their cheat sheet. They said we need the words, what we can say. Even if we don't read it, we need to be able to read it over and over until we see them coming. And we'll put it down. You'll be staying over here in the designated area. <laughs> see, they just need, because they said we don't say it enough and we don't know it enough. And we don't practice enough. And if we know what to say, then we don't have to say no comment or something silly or go away. They're not going away. Let me tell you where they can go. It's called the right-of-way. On your road, you know, there's a little right-of-way, like a ditch or whatever, or, or the sidewalk on each side of the sidewalk. It's called a little right-of-way there. Media can stay there, and they've got what they call telescopic lenses. So they can shoot through your windows if the, light and the, the shades aren't down. Have your classrooms put your shades down if you don't want your, te your kids on TV. And we'd put, we had some extra short buses. And that's not to be ugly, but we had some extra ones that we didn't use during the regular bus times. And we would line them up in front of the hall where we didn't have windows in front of the lobby in the mornings so the kids could not be shot with the uh, cameras. We did everything we could to protect them from having the media in their faces. And yes, you saw some of our kids. If you remember, some of you don't remember this exactly. It's been 11 years. But some of you saw some of our kids on television. We did not give them to our... Our kids were not given by us to the media. The media would go to our mall or go down to our shirt shack and they would get any child that thought they could be the next American Idol. But it was not given to by us. They were not going to be... They were mandated to be at school and they were not going to be on TV because we were going to put them out there. And I called it pimping my kids. <coughs> I wasn't going to use them to make us look better. Do you, that wasn't what we are going to do. They were my chicks, like baby chicks. We're going to protect our chicks. And my next layer I was going to protect is my staff and my teachers. And then any of those that gave any kind of interviews or whatever, that was not, that was not inside school. And I tell you what, your staff and your teachers get the lecture that they don't talk unless they want to worry about liability. Because we can't talk with one voice. And those little secretaries, that little one at that I love so good, that goes to the beauty shop about three times a week. I told her, I said, you probably tell that lady everything about yourself, but you better not be telling her about this. Because you don't know any more than anybody else knows. She can, you can hand her the facts. You can hand her the email that you're giving everybody else, but you can't talk about anything that you know that's going on in our office. Because this is something you could be sued over. And you know that lady did not want to be sued. So she heard what we had to say. So you've got to make sure. Because your secretaries in your office are your first line of defense. And they don't need to be talking about something that's going on that doesn't need to be talked about. I'm not going to tell who, but there was somebody in city government who kept saying on TV, my gut feeling is there's more people involved. My gut feeling, I kept saying, put... Keep your guts to yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought that wasn't a smart thing to be saying on television. He did not realize. He thought he was at the coffee shop. He didn't realize he was on CNN. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, he just didn't get it. God bless his heart. Mm -hmm. He's not there anymore. <laughs> I'm still here. He's not there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Community liaison. Communicate with parent groups and all that. That's probably your school secretary or somebody that's really good with that kind of stuff. Okay, she's not doing that first responder group as much as she's doing the parents that come in, you know, the ones that come in, or at least the kids and all that kind of stuff. Now, we already talked about the one who's in charge of who, release and all that. They work together, but that one that's the occupant release person is really in charge of everybody. And if we have a mass exodus, he's got to make sure everybody is released to the right person. These people work together. And there will be mass exodus, but you're going to do it in an orderly fashion if you say we're going to release school because we now have a crime scene at our school. Okay? It's exodus, but it's an orderly fashion. All right. Counseling.
counseling coordinator. I call them the gatekeeper. I call them the gatekeeper because we talked earlier about this just a hair. They need to make sure that the counselors, and really I suggest because they are trained in school counseling, that you get counselors get together, kumbaya one another. Okay? Now some of you in the back have learned some new words. I know, you've already told me. Okay. That's a, that's a new concept, kumbaya one another. And know that if you have an incident over here, you're going to be asking for counselors over here. And use school counselors to come to your school and help out. And the other counselors from the community, make sure that they've been trained in school counseling before you use them, or you could have liability situations. I just don't know. That's something you need to decide. As a district, as a diocese, as a charter school, you need to decide that before it ever happens because there's a liability issue right there. You're going to have a lot of kids. We went to school the next day. We, got, we would have had issues if we didn't and issues if we did the night after we had a parent meeting because parents need to know that we love their kids and our, kid, our school was safe and we did not know how this happened and we were going to baby and love them the next day. We had a question and answer. We had all the key components. We had all our key people there and we said, here we are, open forum. We don't know why. We don't know how. We're doing the best we can, but we love you. they got to know that. Our community is small and we love each other. And they knew that. But we had to come together and they had to talk to us. And we had to talk to them. We had scared parents. We had very, very few absent the next day. We're talking six, seven kids. I mean, none hardly. Those six or seven came to me and said later, or a couple of them did, I missed out by not coming to school the next day because they all got to bond and I didn't get to be there. We had them at school the next day because they needed to be together. We had a different type of school schedule. The bells did not ring. They went from class to class as someone on the loudspeaker said, we're going to class two, we're going to class three, da 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 da, da. If they needed to go in and out to go to a counselor, they were allowed to do that. Some needed to, some didn't. Some teachers wanted counselors in their rooms to talk to the kids. Some teachers felt like they could talk to the kids. Not every teacher can do that with a child. Some teachers teach math, some teachers teach kids. We've talked. So, just know ahead who needs that. Make sure in everybody's box, have, have a faculty meeting, have a faculty meeting after school, have a faculty meeting, before, well, after, right as they get ready to leave, have one in the morning before they come back. Make sure everybody's on the same page. Answer any questions. Tell them what they can tell and what they can't. When a book hits the floor, every kid's going to cry. You know, it's just going to happen. Be ready. But we opened our school as a place for them to grieve. Our art teacher was wonderful because the art is an expression. Band is... It was, it was a little different with band because the boy had been in band and there was a grief situation going on. But the art teacher let him express a lot of things. Okay. Uh, supply coordinator. This is probably your cafeteria lady and a teacher or two that's willing to go around and keep your classroom go kits. I wanted to bring the backpack. We're all about classroom backpacks now. In Kentucky... I wanted to bring you one and give it to you today. I did, I did, I did. But I didn't have room for that in my clothes and I made a decision. Okay. <laughs> I just, I went with my gut. Okay. Oh, you know. Okay. So, uh, anyway, uh, we're, we're kind of, and he's got a list of, in your book, you've got a list of what could be in those little backpacks for, for schools, but everybody likes a prototype to look at, you know, and you love it. It's red. Would that not be cute? Okay. I will mail you one. Okay, but I don't have one, and you can get a picture from my website. But it's a backpack that you can have either one per fourth grade or one per class, where they can take out even when they go on the playground in case somebody needs a band aid. It's really nifty to even have it, even little as that, or a field trip, even small as a field trip. Just kind of start using those things and know, be familiar. And we're all about kind of. We're going to talk about the what's in this, but we we were going to the friction stuff now instead of the flashlight with the batteries. We got the friction batteries and I think they're cool because they got a siren, they got all kinds of things. I mean, I can, I can just see the kid that's 
got a little issue with busyness. I'm not going to call any titles or names, but, you know, can you just see him keeping that friction flashlight going? Hey, Junior, I need this friction flashlight ready. Okay. Woo! See, Junior's got some time and a lot of energy. You know what I'm saying? Junior's in charge. He's my supply sergeant. <laughs> Give him a tag. Let him be the supply sergeant. Okay. Ah, oh, transportation coordinator. Establish emergency transportation for students. Some of this is going to have to come straight out of your all uh, executive support team, your transportation. If you have to leave big enough that you've got to go to another site, you're going to have to have transportation. You don't have school buses on every site right now, or not enough to take all your kids. So that's going to have to come, but you're going to have to have somebody that knows that after the incident command person says, the principal says, you are going to have to handle this, then they're going to have to handle how we get on it, how we make sure everybody's on the buses, how we load them, how we get wherever, and back and forth, and that kind of stuff. And floor wardens is new to me. So floor wardens is a new thing. Uh, and I'm assuming that floor wardens, when I'm looking at this, are they people that are just making sure that everybody, everything's clean on the floor? Okay. I think that's just real nifty. So you've got somebody in charge of making sure this floor is clear and saying, reporting back, this is a clear floor. Do they have, they have radios? Every floor warden has a radio? <laughs> eh, no, no, oh, mm -mm, okay. That's a, that's a wish list thing. That's a wish list thing. I'm thinking today I would be making me a wish list. Okay, wish list thing. And I think a lot of times at schools there are things that people say, if you had a wish list, what would it be? I'd have one ready. I got one a mile long myself, okay? And I got, I got 500 backpacks because of it from the College of Ed. They said, we got a little money at the end of the year? We said, we got a little need. You got money, we got need. Life's good. We're a team. All right. Moving right along. All right. We are going to... Universal procedures. I'm going to show you this real quick. I can't cover it all with you. I'm just trying to hit the high points. I sure hope. That piece I did kind of cover with you. Because you'll say, when you just, if you read that by yourself, that's the incident command, and that should work for any, like a business or anywhere. I was trying to make it feel like school. Did that help a little to go over it with you? Yes. I want it to feel like school. Because when I just give that to an <laughs> elementary principal that was a friend of mine, she said, I don't see my people in this. <laughs> I'm saying, gotcha. So we sat down together and came up with what kind of people fit into this. And it helped her, okay? So that's why I'm trying to... Okay, these slip charts are just nifty neat. And when we were out and about, uh, we went to Webb Elementary. Woo! Wherever you are. Okay. And it was on the wall. Miss Johnson in the office had hers already on the wall. And I was so proud of her. And I'm sure if you go back, you pat somebody on the back if it's on the wall somewhere and say, we were talking about this today, and this was on the wall, and we're so proud... One thing that I love about yours, our flip chart is not made out of something that's this nifty. What I like is it's easy to find because it's so thick. It's not something that you put in a drawer and you can't find. It shouldn't be put in a drawer. It should be hanging on the wall. That's what it's made for. You see that little hole? That's not because they ran out of material. <laughs> okay. That is because it needs to be on the wall in a very visible place. What color is it? It's not because that's mascot color either, is it? That's because it's emergency color, okay? Now, there are other colors in here. I'm going to show you what they do for you, okay? All right, look in the middle there. Red side out. Okay, you need assistance. Let's say we went outside and we were having a fire drill. You take your flip chart with you on a fire drill. Say that with me. You take your flip chart out on a fire drill. Let's do that again. You take your flip chart out on a fire drill. Who does? Everybody. Who does? Everybody. Who does? Everybody. You got it. Okay. All right. When you're out there, the teacher has their roster. They make sure everybody's in place, and it's the nicest little line. And when everybody is in their place like they're supposed to be, they hold up their green. Nonverbal communication. How nifty is this? The little administrator standing over here to the side sees green, 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 green down the road. And what? She doesn't have to do anything but go, all clear. Ah, yeah, all clear. You can go back in. How neat, how quick, how clean. Nobody hollering, I'm good, I'm good. 
good. How about you, Sarah Jane? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I gotta go bathroom. Ever see, if somebody's talking, everybody's talking. Do you see how that goes? You see where I'm coming from. But if you're quiet, and Sally Sue's gonna say, "Put your crane up," because she knows, and she's gonna tell the substitute, "Don't forget that flip chart," because you've already said, "Sally Sue, you are in charge of the flip chart." She likes being in charge. She's always in charge. Okay, you get out of your chair, she's trying to sit in your chair. You know the kind, don't you? Okay. Now, if you have an extra, you count and you got 32 and you usually just have 31. (laughs) Whoops! Who is it? I don't know that face, that girl. Okay, not very clean. I don't know where he's coming from, but he's not mine. I don't know. Extra kid! Extra kid! The yellow is have an extra kid, or maybe five extra kids because we were on the playground. You got five that aren't yours. That teacher isn't close enough for you just to give them to her. You got an extra kid. It's caution. I got too many. Okay? Are we on the same page? So you're going to say, oh, she's got too many. She's got a big crowd here. Okay, yellow, caution, she's got too many. Did she have to holler? Come here, come here, come here. I got too many. No. What, what happened? Yellow is up. There's an issue. The green is already taken care of. You don't have to worry about the green. You're just going to go to the yellow, and you're going to go to two kinds. You're going to go to the red. Red is don't have them all. Red is red is worse. Red is I don't have them all. Yellow is I got too many. Oh, I got too many is somebody's going to be looking for them. I go to red first to find out who's missing. Then I go to yellow to see who you got extra. Because my yellow, my red missing is more important than you got somebody else's. You got somebody else's is good. We'd rather have too many than not enough. Okay? If a few from the neighborhood had decided to come out for the fire drill, okay, okay. That's all right. Come on over, baby. We don't care. But we don't want to miss one. So she goes as a principal. Green. Mmm, that's good. First thing she goes to is, got one missing. Or maybe more than one. Got somebody missing. Then she has her eyeballs on, ooh, Sarah Jane down there, she's got at least one more than she's supposed to have. So that's a good thing. Because if all I got is a red and a green, then I need a yellow somewhere. Or I got to send somebody into the bathrooms. Or I got to send somebody to the playgrounds. Because nobody's got too many. Okay, do you see how this works? Do you like this? Love it. I like it. Let's clap for this. This is good. Ah, this is good. Now, when you got a lockdown, yes, ma'am. We just, now, well, we have one as for people that as, as ooh, excuse me. <laughs> We're going back to our school to well, for me, I have to train. Yes, ma'am. So, will we have more than one of those? One per classroom. Oh, okay. For per, so our per Every per classroom will have one. And then one will be displayed, I guess, in the office. Absolutely. Okay. Isn't that great? Okay. Isn't that fantastic? And it's I just love it. No, but I really do because this is not something that one, if you just have one in school, that's not worth a doubt. Yeah. You, you, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, we're, we're going to the future. <laughs> yeah. I just, uh, what school are you from? Maybe D. Lee. Um, your line should be there. Um, we'll, we'll send us an email at ESA at DC.gov. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we'll, you definitely have an allotment there. Oh, I'm, 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 okay. Okay. okay, does everybody get, everybody get that we're going to have one in every classroom? Yeah. And one in the office. Okay, now, when we have a lockdown, in the door window, and if your door window don't have a door window, not all of my door windows, do they? Under the door. Okay? Is this just too cool? Under the door. If you can't get it, stick it in the door window. See, we don't even say door window. We just stick it under the door. What do you do? Is this not good? No, no that's good. No, that's the door is great. That's actually in the instructions as well. Okay. Um, real quick, though, one thing I would like to add about this is MPD um, is actually training their officers on the use of this. Or that's actually not the use of it, but actually they're training the SWAT teams. I love it. So that they will recognize the red and the green. So they know what when they enter your building and if they see the red, they're gonna go in there and clear that room first. 
if they see green, then they're going to tie it off, basically use a zip, zip tie or whatever method they're going to use to secure it, and they're going to move on. Okay. I've been in situations where we've had guns and people have come into the school with guns. So if you have a situation in your classroom or something and you want to let somebody know not verbally, okay, if you need assistance or there's trouble, now, that's what the do. That's what the do. That's what work color. That's what now we, we left the yellow out. If you want to use the yellow. For something else, you can. For something else internally, you can. But I'm just telling you what um, MPD is expecting. I can tell you that uh, you know uh, the captain of the, the Special Operations Division of MPD, name's Captain Harold. Um, he's actually working on that training component, and SWAT is being trained in that. And uh, they're going to drill that down as far as the academy, actually, over the course of the coming years. We do this. We do not have it as classy as you have it. What we have, and I'm going to tell you, if somebody loses theirs. And you have to have something just matter of fact. Okay, take red construction paper and the laminator. Make your own, baby, okay. It will work. But what, what's so neat? I've, done, I've been there and done that, seen this. It's wonderful. Here we go. I'm looking down the fourth grade hall. I see green, 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 green. I don't have to deal with that anymore. I go to the next stall, the next stall. I don't have to go to every door and go, Miss Butler, y'all all right? I know that's right. Mr. Somebody, y'all all right? Do you, see where, do you see where I'm coming from? Yes, sir. Um, going down the hall and you see all green and maybe there's one door that doesn't have anything. Would they respond as if it was a red? That's correct. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And maybe nobody in there, but you still think it's a red if it's not a green. If it's not a green, it's a red. Do you understand? Yes. If it's not a green, it's a red. And Question. Okay, yes. Right here. Yes. What do you do? Because um, my school is open space. I, oh, I love it. God out. bless your heart. Go ahead. What do you do in a lockdown in my, in my setting? How open space are we talking? We're talking no top? Open, open. Okay. Right. <laughs> I'm just wondering if we're talking no classroom, no top. No, you know, I, mean, I don't know how open. Okay. Flea market open. Oh, I got you. <laughs> this is what the book says because I've read your book many times. Okay, your book says find bathroom space. Find behind the cafeteria space. You know, there are little rooms in the cafeteria. There are rooms in the office. There are counselor spaces. Designate spaces for all your kids to be, and they need to know where they have to go, and it won't be in those open spaces. And it's going to be tight as all get out. And I hate it for you, and I don't know what's good. Just do the best you can, but... but Everybody will know where they are. You need to know that there's three classes behind the cafeteria, and you need a green coming out from there. You, but you know, somebody knows to go check that. That's tough. I taught an open concept when I was at Henderson, Kentucky, and it was we called it the pods. We had these pods, and they had just blackboards freestanding, and that was the difference in second, third grade. And if you had an attention issue, which I do, <laughs> we're not even talking about the children. <laughs> I learned a lot that year. <laughs> anyway, we're not going there. Okay, but do you get this? This is just, this is, if you didn't get anything else today, you got a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah, this is good, 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 good. Nonverbal communication. I love it, I love it, I love it. Don't lose these. If they lose these, tell them they have to have the other. There's no way out of having the other. They have to have, they have to make their own laminated that page and have it on the wall if they can't find this until we get new ones for them. I mean, they just have to have it. Yep. Um, Had to. Exactly. Um, bringing that up, if you want to take the initiative, we actually have all the inserts and everything. This entire guide cover, it's all actually available for download as PDF. So if you wanted to print them up and cut them, if you have, you know are so inclined, um, if you needed additional ones, you know, while we're in the process of ordering, so I can tell you that we are actually back ordered right now. Uh, we can't fill all the requests for them. Um, the initial you got the spiral. You got that plan. We actually release these. So all the schools actually in December of, two, of last year, 2008. Um, so there are some new buildings, and uh, there's a lot of new administrators that have come in from various of these schools, or various schools rather. And uh, I think that's what's caused a lot of confusion moving forward because they're out there, and 
either the past administration has been collected in a closet or they didn't collect them at all and now teachers have taken them on but they're not working with us so um, there's definitely some issues that we're having with that so but um, we are working on securing additional funding to uh, you know produce additional copies to make sure we continue to support this in the same fashion that it is but I would say um you know, you get you some harder board here, It'll, and if not cardboard, you, you need to get that thicker board. Cardstock. Cardstock, yeah. Cardstock, yes ma'am. Are those available for charter schools as well? Uh, yes, they will be charged. All DCPS, our diocese, I can tell you, does, did not receive these, but I can tell you that Ken, uh, Ken Galgan um, with the Archdiocese, I'm not sure if he's here today or not, I think he was planning on it, but I didn't see him. And um, I know that they're looking at securing and doing and, and following the same format. Um, but the charter school, all the charter schools and all these public schools, uh, they were purchased, like I said earlier, in the, earlier this morning. Um, actually, the Deputy Mayor for Education actually gave us the money uh, to purchase an upgrade. Because we were going to do something very similar with the card stock and all the yeah. thin stuff uh, with the grant money. But it didn't cover the expense of these. And they stepped up and gave us the money. And it's for all DC, all DC public schools and all charter schools do have them. And they're actually two different. The only thing that changes on them actually um, is the very front tab and both are available for download for like I said so if it's something you want to go back and you need right now you can do that bsa.dc.gov but the point is that this is the only thing that changes everything else is the same okay and the, uh, the charter schools basically has some blanks that you have to fill out yourself the new ones that we're getting ready to print all of them where were you can put stuff in here uh, we're going to do two separate because you can put stuff in here it doesn't make sense anymore from a cost standpoint and everyone and I was telling them that, you know, some of them were here, I said, said you could stick stuff in the back here do you, if you need other little information just for your school. And we're actually going to be expanding and sending out inserts as we expand on different things. Uh, there's some areas, there's actually a couple topics that we'll be expanding in the course of the, over the course of the next year. Probably you'll have some new inserts that will be mailed to your building so that you can replace them. Because it's fluid. Remember that word? That was good. Wasn't it? it was fluid. Fire people be good. Yeah, You'd be good help. You'd be good help. When you see the application later at the reference, where you're actually, it says an online template. We've done a lot of things online. We're trying to make it easy as possible for you. So once you go online, you'll see the request for the request for assistance button. You can hit that anywhere. It's on every every page in the widget. You can hit that button, and it's going to send an email directly to USA at and we'll be and that's going to alert us, and we're going to send a team out to help you. Um, if uh, Another way you can contact me directly. My contact information is right on front of the right, right on front of the So there's multiple ways to contact us. And uh, fire department would be great to help too. Fire, well, that's part of the alliance. Okay. That's why it's going to the alliance um, because you're not calling necessarily just me. You know, when you call when you call the alliance, you're calling on all those partners I listed earlier. Calling the fire department, police department, the state fire department that we're talking about. That's what makes this. That's what really makes this a very powerful thing. And you've got some pages in here we're going to get in a second that's going to address some of your stuff. Is we aren't there, we are not developing your plan. The most important thing up there that I took down that, that went up there, I didn't really mention too much because it was just a start and, you know, it's a speed chance here and, you know, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, Kevin, you know, all the good stuff. So the point is that... <laughs> sorry. Karen was watching me, you know, and... <laughs> Uh, now I forgot what I was going to say. You didn't point. You didn't point out that it's their specific plan. Oh yes, the I knew that's what you were going to say.
evacuation plans. That is required. It's something we have to have in our buildings and evacuation plans. This is replacing that. And we're making it easy for them. So they have 50 different types of plans from different, you know, different schools. We're following the same format in an electronic format for them to go down here through approval. I'm not going to go into that right now, so get it ready to, because that's actually coming up at lunch. Yes. And I'm sure that uh, we're having fun. Yeah. <laughs> he put me in as a principal of the Demo High School. I just love it. Yeah. And, and I even have a street address and everything. Okay. So that's good. I, have, I played with it last night. Here are your universal responses and procedures. This is what you do. That was the red and the green when you do a lockdown. If you have little babies, if you have little bitties and you have a lockdown, and you say you have a lockdown for quite a while with the little bitties. Kindergartners and first graders are not really good very long by themselves, not wiggling. I have a lockdown, and I sent it to you, didn't I? Yes. PowerPoint. I will park on. And some of the best things to do with a little bit. This is just through experience of teaching this class that I teach at college. All these principals tell me what's going on in their schools, and they said we found out the best thing to do is to have a book that the children like, and our flashlight, our crank flashlight, ready. And we take it to our corner, or we take it to wherever, whenever we're getting there for our uh, lockdown. Our kids know it's a serious business. We're real quiet for a while. And if we have to stay very long, then we will quietly whisper the story to them to keep them quiet. Because they have to have something to keep them quiet. Now, is that a perfect lockdown? Probably not in a perfect world. It isn't. But you still need to keep them quiet. And that's the best thing that we could keep we could do for those little bitty kindergartners and they didn't wiggle as much and a lot of them would go on to sleep if they were talked too softly if they have to be in a lockdown for a very long time we had one school that was in a lockdown for quite a while because of a uh, chemical spill and they were not communicated after the lockdown there was no communication with the teachers and it was a real long time drawn out for a while and I have to say you need to communicate with your teachers through emails through something that this is a lockdown for a while, and it's going to be a while. And if it's a lockdown for a chemical spill, you can talk to them and read to them. Do you see what I'm saying? There's a difference than if it is for an intruder. Yes, sir. Uh, Karen, I, I know in our school, our classrooms cannot be locked from the inside. Yeah. That is very scary. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You saw Columbine, didn't you? You saw Columbine when the little guy went out, locked his door, and lost his life. Right. And the, son, the little boy tried to save him. The, it is just in my the head. From the outside, and they can be unlocked from the inside. But once those doors are closed, you cannot turn the knob. And I think your school is a big problem. And they changed it about four or five years ago, I think. Yeah. Okay, that's not something I can really do for you. <laughs> it's something you need to address. Yeah. I think it's something to bring up in a meeting like this. I think it's perfect to bring in a meeting like this. Yes, sir. Have that kind of door. If you have that kind of door, also. These are some, this is something somebody has to address. Yeah, but that's not our case. Uh, I know I had schools that had the same issue in, in places I've been. And um, some of them changed the locks out. It cost a lot of money. But they thought that was uh, a worthy thing to do. Some of them said, okay, we lock all our doors. We don't shut them unless we're in lockdown. I mean, we don't close them unless we're in lockdown. But then we had others that said we close them all the time. We don't lock them unless we're in lockdown. So there's, see, there's just you. This is something that probably needs to be one of the questions that needs to go to Brian. And y'all need to address this. But it's a very good question. Okay. All right. Let's go on through the universal procedures. Shelter in place. What? Why would you need to shelter in place if there is the chemical spill? If there is something coming in, why would you need a rug under the door? Okay, keep the stuff from coming in your room. Okay, see? Close and tape all windows and doors. What is bracelet of choice for most teachers? Duct tape. (laughs) Have the duct tape available. 
Turn off heat, ventilation, air conditioning systems. Okay, you may be there a while. But now, see, specifically, some of you would know that you were closer to larger intersections than others. See, your plan may be more towards one to worry about than others. It depends on where you live. Are, are you close to the train track or the metro? Are you not? You know, you know where you're located. That's why yours is more specific to you. If you don't have that meeting with your teachers and you don't work together, it is just a meeting with a few and everybody else doesn't know what to do. You need buy-in. You've, you've done it where you thought you were saving them work. You thought you were going to be the good guy. I had a principal who thought he was going to be the good guy. He's going to write the academic plan for the whole school and he wasn't going to make his teachers do anything. They didn't know what it was. They didn't want part of it. And they didn't do well the first two years. The next two years, he said, you got to do it. I'll help you. Once that all happened, they knew what the plan was and they knew how to follow it. And then they fussed and fought and fought over the plan, but they knew what it was. He was trying to be the good guy, not make them stay after school and plan. Because they weren't part of the plan, they didn't have buy-in. And until he saw it, he had been a teacher and he thought, oh, I'm just saving them hours of work. He's trying to be a good guy. But he didn't save them anything because they just messed up big time. So if you don't get them together, I don't care if they carry on and go, oh, no, 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 I tell you what the best kind of meeting is. It's the stand-up meeting. It doesn't last too long. Because nobody wants to stay very long and fuss about anything if they have to stand up. Don't put any chairs out. You like it? I teach communications. You love it? Okay. What you can't email, you stand up and meet about. Okay. And then you don't have meetings all the time. It just works really well. Okay. Severe weather. Don't put Buddy on the, on the I thought about doing it, on the roof looking for the tornado. That is not good. <laughs> Tell us when it comes, Buddy. <laughs> Had all I can take. He's been by my desk for two months now. <laughs> Put Buddy on the window. <laughs> they told me not to do that. And one of them said, yeah, but I got a little extra money. Could he go play on the train track? No, he can't play on the train track. Okay. Okay, we love them. We do. Okay, drop, cover, and hold. Earthquake. I told you. I'll give you that link. It's wonderful. That simulation from FEMA that you can read to your kids. It is a wonderful link. They will love it. Read it on the loudspeaker and let it be a whole thing. It even talks about aftershock. It, it makes, they're supposed to shake their tables that they're under. I had this little girl, she just cues a button. She looked at me and she's going, she's pulling on my top and pulling on my, I said, what honey? I was telling about earthquake. She said, I don't fit under my desk. <laughs> she wasn't ashamed of it. She just doesn't fit under her desk. She's third grade. I said, then you're the special one. You get to be under the teacher's desk. Oh! <laughs> She's so excited. So she gets to be under the teacher's desk. Or she gets to be under the reading table. But she needs to know that and it's no big deal. Don't make a deal out of it. Just let her know she can be somewhere. But she's a little worried. Because she wasn't going to be able to fit under her desk. But if you hadn't practiced, she doesn't know where to go. Do you see what I'm saying? If she don't practice, she doesn't know where to go. Because she tries to get under her desk and her little body doesn't get under there. Do you yeah, we're all shapes and sizes. Some days we feel better about that than others. <laughs> yeah, I got that wardrobe that goes from, uh, 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 you know. Yeah, y'all don't have to worry about it. Not everybody has to worry about that. Planning guidance for unique circumstances. Now, okay, Many, every school is a unique circumstance. I know, everybody has one, <laughs> right? And it just sneaks up on you a lot, doesn't it? Okay, but open concept. Highly disabled children. That's pages one through uh, eleven through seventeen, and I'm gonna let you read that. Okay, we're gonna move on. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Brian's gonna do that with you after lunch. <laughs> I'm bad, aren't I? I'm bad. Okay. All right. Let's go to page eighteen. How are we doing on time, Brian? Getting good. Okay. Visitor screening policy. Okay. I just made this cute little sign. I don't, you know, it goes with the wording right here. Now, I'm all about PR. You know that, don't you? I'm all about PR. So, this looks a little severe to me, but it is a uniform 
sign. So I'm saying, okay, all visitors can, you could have this little sign up there, but I'd all say, I also would like to see a sign that says, welcome. We are so proud you came to our school today. If you are a parent and you came to be a volunteer, you are welcome. But because of our safety policies, we need you to stop by the office. Thank you. We are a safe school. See, that's, that's my look at this. Instead of some parent going, they don't even want us there anymore. Be, be. See, seriously, you might have to have that somewhere, but I also see that a welcome sign. You know, if you are a visitor donating your time from Turner, whatever. I was over there and there was some Turner company that was at some architectural company over there, Phelps. You know, we are so proud you're mentoring our children. Thank you for coming today. But as you sign in, we appreciate you respecting the safety that we want for our children. See, doesn't that kind of sound, that's savvy, that's good. Instead of going, we are safe, we are in lockdown, we're do, 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 do. you know, we're prison-esque, okay? We don't want to look prison-esque, you, see, you know, because we are all about kids, do you, you know. We want it to not be quite so formal. Do you, this is good. This is something that needs to be somewhere. Yes? Actually, one of the things I was Chief here, I've actually one of the things that's on the yes. to-do list. Yes, yes. But you, I'm looking at perception because I have a lot of people that come to me and say, we put too much up that looks like we don't want you in here and it looks like we don't want to be part of the community. And I just want it to say, we want you to be part of our community as a school. We want you to be part of it. We want you to volunteer. We want you to be everything you want to be. But don't you want to be part of the policy that keeps your kids safe? And by doing that, we just need you signing in. Thank you so very much. See? And with a smile. The, you know, it... Sugar is better than, you know, vinegar every time. Okay. Because if I put that sign up at one of my schools, I'd have had a mama in a minute that would, she has uh, the school news, she has the, the area newspaper on speed dial. <laughs> Do you know what they have that school? I wrote it down. I'll send it to you. <laughs> they, just, they just like attention. God bless them. And, you know, I wish... This is what I'd like to do for them. I'd either like to send them a job application to Walmart, or I'd like to send them a realtor to their house. <laughs> is that good? Even the ones in the back that are multitasking heard that, didn't they? <laughs> okay, moving on. Okay, page 23. Now this is going to be available, not that this is anything special, but I did take a little time with it. So if you want to use this PowerPoint, you don't want to fool with making one, this will be available online, okay? And at the bottom, the little tabs, the blue stands for Section 3 and the yellow is Section 1. And the page numbers are there for you, okay? All right. Page 23. Okay, right before you get to 23, though, I want to say, on page 21, you might want to put the top, I did. This is, teacher will fill it out, principal is responsible, or I see. Remember the book stops here? That's going to happen a lot. Okay, Prince, teacher will fill this out. This is emergency attendance. What did we have happen and who all was there? Okay, we had fire drill, we had this, we had lockdown. Who all was, who all was there? Were there any injuries? I'm real big about these throwaway cameras. You know those little $5 cameras? I document everything with a picture. I'd rather see it. Or if you have a cell phone with a camera, I document everything. If a child gets a little bump, I take a picture. Because later when he has a big bump when he went home, it didn't happen at my school. If somebody says there's a knife at my school, I want to show them the butter knife that was at my school. I don't want them to say it was an 11-inch knife. You know, I, and you know what I do? I'm like CSI. I take a ruler and I lay right down beside it. And I take a picture of that. And I've got documentation of what that knife looked like instead of that knife being all blown out of shape because it was at my school. All it was is somebody's little pocket knife or they had a little multi-tool that they'd gone camping with and they left it in their pocket. And I'm going to show how piddly that looks compared to some ruler laying down there, okay? 
And then I'm going to have that in the paper in an editorial later after I've okayed it through the chancellor's office and everybody else has to okay it. Okay? I'm not going to editorialize anything I haven't okayed. But we're going to get out the PR about that because it's not going to say that I had a knife at my school when it wasn't anything. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Because I got a good school and I'm going to keep it that way. Nobody's going to take them out of my school and homeschool them because of it. All right. Here's a checklist, and that's a wonderful checklist. Principal, that's your job. Buck stops here. Page 23. But you know what's, what's so good, Principal, is every one of these forms is going to be online. We're going to show you that. All you have to do is just do a little typing, and if you don't type, you've probably got some one-eighth of some secretary that can do it for you. <laughs> yeah. If she wants to keep her job, she'll do it too. <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to look at the forms real quick. Look at page 25. That form's online. Do you see the redundancy built into page 23? 25, excuse me. 25, do you see that? The CERT assignment. CERT school emergency response. You got it. Okay. Now, when you can't remember what all I said, because I said it quick, I had a fourth grader tell me one time, said, you say more than an hour than anybody I know. And I told him, I said, look what you're going to learn in a year. And they said, whoo. <laughs> God bless them. Okay, 25. Do you see that? I couldn't just fill that out right now. I'd have to go back and refer, would you? Okay, I'd have to go back and refer. All right, page 27, command posts. Now, you're going to have to have some command posts. One of your command posts probably be at the lobby of your school. You know, right in the mid middle, right there by the office. Another one may have to be out by your flagpole if you have to be at a fire drill situation, an evacuation situation. If you've got a flagpole, that might be a good place to put it. Another one may have to be out on your playground or your football field. you got one of those. Okay? Another one might even be in your gym or your cafeteria if you can't be in your lobby, but you've got to be in your school. You, you've got to think about those things. If you say, I don't remember what she said, and I don't, want to have, I don't have time to read this book, that's what Brian's for. He's going to be sitting over there going, I wonder who's going to call today. <laughs> I'm getting you in all kinds of trouble. I love it. Next time he won't call me. Okay. 29. Principal. Up the top I'd write the word principal. I see. Passes out to the faculty the first day. This is the skill. This is, I have it up here, but I'm not going to put it up here because I have to go back to get it. Uh, this is uh, the staff skills inventory. Remember when I was talking about pass this out at the beginning of the year and let everybody fill one of these puppies out, send it back to you, and now you know your faculty, what they have. If you don't like this form, fix yourself something better. But I'd start with something that's already made. Don't recreate the wheel if you don't have to. All right. And make it an honor to be here. Oh, I want, I want to make sure that you get one of these. As you're giving them to everybody. <laughs> okay. New teachers, as they're hired, this is in their packet. Do you understand what I'm saying? If they have a teacher handbook, then they have to tear out some things and hand back to you for insurance and stuff. This is part of what they have to give you back like for insurance and stuff. And you have a date on there that it's due. See how that works? Okay. It's not like something that you give me when I, you feel like it. It's not a when you feel like it kind of thing. New teachers, new hires, use with the planning process. Okay, next, next is 31. Okay, two minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm hurrying, I promise. First day of school and new students as they enter school. This is, in the, this is in the first day of school package. You know how they have to sign all this opt-in, opt-out stuff? They can do this, they can't do that. They can have a picture, but they can't put it on the web. They can do this, they can be in the yearbook, they can't do that. You know all that mess they got to sign? Okay, have this there. If students need assistance or staff, some of your staff are diabetic. You need to know that. There's different things that you need to know about your staff and your students. They need assistance. That needs to all be entered on a page that's a general page of everybody that needs extra assistance. Is this fluid? Does this change? Is this plan fluid? Does this plan go away just annually? We look at it. Okay. 33, principal, put it top, all faculty and staff. 
Hazard hunt. I think this is a hoot. It's kind of like a Easter egg. I put it in April. It's an Easter egg hunt. You're hunting for hazards in your school. Too many plugs in the outlet. You go to my room, I go to your room. Let's see what the problem is and who's responsible. And then all of that goes to the principal and then she delegates who has to take care of it or which ones of them go to you or whomever to take care of. Next one, 35. Talk to the fire guys. Have first responders on your team for your assembly areas. You've got to figure those out. You've got to have MOAs. We talked about that yesterday. You need to have memorandums of agreement with people. Brother Bob may not be at that church forever if you're going down the street to the church. So we need to have a memorandum of agreement with that church so you know if it's where the key is, who to call, if you're going to bring your kids to that, that church. It may be another school you're going to, but if it's not another school, what if it's an after-school program and there's no key available? Think on that. 39. Principal. And this one's going to involve the executive support team because they're going to have to get you transportation. Okay, I'm going to stop there because I think we're about done, aren't we?